Thank you, Brian. For the first time since 1985, the Nebraska Cornhuskers come into game number three with a record of one and one. Now, they had hoped for their third consecutive national title, something no one else has ever done, and only eight teams have had the opportunity of doing. Now, the so-called experts are saying those national title hopes are all but gone. Nebraska head coach Tom Osborne does not agree, but that is not what he is really concerned about. Well, I don't think it's out of the question. It's obviously, it's a lot more difficult to come by now. Uh, I remember losing um, a game to uh, Miami a few years ago, about 1984 Orange Bowl. Or I think they lost their opening game 31 to nothing to Florida, and then they ran off 11 straight wins, and they were national champions. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember uh, losing a game to Florida State about three years ago, where they had lost to uh, Notre Dame in November, which is kind of unheard of to lose a game that late and still be national champions. So it's still possible. It's more difficult. And uh, the main thing I'm worried about now is not a national championship. I'm just worried about playing well. I want us to be a, the kind of team that I think we can be. And uh, hopefully that'll come. And hopefully it'll come pretty quick. I'm a broadcast partner. Dave Lapham joins me now. And Dave, I've known Tom Osborne a while. He has never been obsessed with winning national championships. Only his team performing at their best on a Saturday afternoon. That's the case today. It is the case today. For the first time in a very long time, his team's fiber is being tested, their resiliency. And I think they'll bounce back pretty well. No emotional hangover. What they have to do is worry about themselves, the fans, the prognosticators. They're the ones that said they had S's on their chest. They put their uniforms on in a phone booth, not the team, not the coaches. They knew they had some problems to overcome. They didn't think they'd lose to Arizona State necessarily, but it's how they lost the football game that's a source of concern. They've got a quarterback adjusting to the system. The offensive line, though, predominantly has to step up. Nebraska, over the years, how they've beaten people is running the football. They've led the nation in running four out of the last five years. They have to come off the ball, start knocking some people backwards, and stop the run like they're doing defensively this year. Then national championships will take care of itself. Now there's a crowd of over 75,000 on hand, hoping that happens today, and in a big way. Now let's send it back down to the field with Brian Nooner. Thank you, gentlemen. Look forward to talking to you throughout the day. And, of course, you're going to give us the action from the booth. I'll give you the story from the sideline. You know, this is the first year of the Big 12 Conference, and with it comes a lot of entertaining mascots. Don't take my word for it. Take a look. She's 11 years old, 1,300 pounds, and quite at home on the range near Boulder. Yet each Saturday, she dons black and gold and leads the Colorado football team on the field at a gallop at up to 25 miles an hour. She's Ralphie Three, the Colorado Buffalo of the last nine seasons, and one of the many unique animals of the Big 12. The Buffalo first appeared at CU Games in 1934 as Ralph. No one has realized that he was a she, the name Ralphie was adopted. Bevo 13 is the grand old man of the conference at 13 years old and 1,400 pounds with a 51-inch horn span. A Longhorn first made his appearance in 1916 when Texas A&M students branded their 13-0 winning score from the year before on the new Longhorn. Texas students had to do some tricky artwork connecting numbers into letters to spell the name of a popular near beer Budweiser product during Prohibition. And Bevo was born. Now, one of the most noted mascots throughout the Big 12 has nothing to do with the actual team name. Texas A&M doesn't have an Aggie as a mascot. They have a little collie named Reveille. Oh. In 1913, A&M students in a Model T ran over a dog. They took the injured dog back to the dorm, and when she responded to the morning bugle call, Reveille was named and soon adopted by the A&M Corps of Cadets. Deceased Reveille's 1, 2, 3, and 4 are buried at the southeast end of Kyle Field in front of a tunnel so they can see the scoreboard for Aggie games. She's been a mainstay, and now Reveille 6 is handled by a sophomore cadet. It's part of her tradition. This year, it's Lance Hill. Two Big 12 schools mount student mascots on horses. Martha Reed portrays Texas Tech's masked rider atop jet black quarter horse High Red, while at Oklahoma State, the cowboy spirit rider atop Bullet is actually cowgirl Patty Campbell. In fact, not only are both horseback mascots female, every animal mascot is too, except Bevo. The newest addition to the Big 12 animal kingdom is eight-month-old Jenny, the Baylor Bear. The bear is unique in holding its own identity without a recurring theme name. And since the bigger bears get, the more independent they become, most bears at Baylor are replaced after they get three to four years old. Jenny is the 65th bear since the tradition started in 1917. It's a jungle out there, and it's another unique facet of the conference. Keith Fletcher, Big 12 Showcase.
<laughs> All right. Well, in case you're wondering about today's mascots, you have the Nebraska Cornhuskers and the Rams of Colorado State. You know, a couple side notes. Nebraska is going for victory number 700. The program has been in existence for 107 years, and if they get that milestone today, they will match four other schools, Michigan, Notre Dame, Texas, and Alabama. Colorado and Nebraska, it's our game of the week here in the Big 12 Conference. Award, the Johnny Unitas Award, two national championships. Hey, this guy's good. Hi, I'm Tommy Frazier, former Nebraska quarterback. Coming back here brings back a lot of memories. And guess what? You can watch the Husker next on the Big 12 Game of the Week. One of the spectacular scenes in all of college football, Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. 210 consecutive sellouts, the nation's longest home win streak at 31 games. But last week, their Huskers were knocked out of the top spot, looking for revenge this week. But Colorado State's Calvin Branch does not want to become the sacrificial ram. But can the Nebraska offense get untracked? Quarterback Scott Frost took a lot of criticism for the loss last week, as did running back Amon Green, who is yet to break 100 yards rushing the football this year but they're ready today green and frost ready for the rams next in lincoln winning and great running backs coincide a who's who in college football history the legacy continues with number 30 amon green the sophomore eyeback already has over 1200 career yards he'll lead the huskers against colorado state next and your local Dr. Pepper bottler presents the Big 12 Conference Game of the Week. Today from a sold out Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska, the Nebraska Cornhuskers take on the Colorado State Rams. Hello again, everybody, along with my broadcast partner, Dave Lapham, I'm Ron Thulin. Dave, for the last five years, Nebraska has led the country in rushing, averaging almost 400 yards last year. This year, however, total offensive-wise, for the first time since 75, they have not registered 300 yards total in back-to-back -back games. Yeah, it's really surprising. They're struggling offensively, and the numbers will show that. They're not throwing the football real well. That's not a total surprise. But not running the ball consistently well, that is a surprise. The offensive line has to start playing better. The remedy is smash mouth football, let them come off the line of scrimmage, knock some people backwards, and that'll start to take care of itself. The guy that's taken the brunt of the blame for this is Scott Frost, the quarterback. And as you can see, his passing numbers aren't scintillating, to say the least. What you have to do to get your quarterback and offense's confidence back, simplify things, run a few things well, then build from there, and the offense will start to take care of itself. Well, the good news is Colorado State's defense is next to last in the NCAA. The bad news is their offense is good, averaging almost 40 points a game. And the leader of the pack, Moses Moreno. And this quarterback is confident. Look at these numbers. Nine touchdown passes on the season to six different receivers. Distributed the ball all over the field. Only three interceptions. That three to one ratio is outstanding. The key is though, they have to run the football. They've averaged 230 yards a game coming in. They have to run the ball against Nebraska for 100 yards in this afternoon's game to complement his efforts to stay in it, Ron. Well, Dave, back-to-back -back losses don't happen too often here in Lincoln. In fact, the last time was 1990. But during the regular season in the Tom Osborne era, it has happened only once. That was back in 1976. We'll step aside and Dave will tell us what both teams have to do to win. Big 12 Conference Football is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottling. And by Southwest Airlines with low fares on every flight, every seat, every day. And by Sitco, look for the sign of quality throughout Big 12 country. Sitco says go.
Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska is the third largest city in Nebraska today. Now let's take a look at the Southwest Airlines team. Uh, Southwest Airlines, low fares on every flight, every seat, every day. Dave? Well, Colorado State, they have to be physical in every phase, Ron. Offensively, defensively, and special teams. And they have to put the ball in the end zone. Seven points, don't settle for field goals. And no silly mistakes, no turnovers, no missed assignments. They have a small or a no margin for error. And then on the Nebraska side of things, they want to erase any doubt that was established last week against Arizona State. Come out early and dominate. No turnovers. They gave it away a bunch of times against Arizona State. That was a problem. Last year, they had seven one-play drives. They've got to get some big plays today. And those are the Southwest Airlines must. When we come back, we'll have the opening kickoff, Colorado State in Nebraska. McDougal set to kick it off for Colorado State. They won the toss, but they have deferred to the second half and back to receive the kickoff. D'Angelo Evans on the far side and Damon Benning on the near side. And it is going to be Evans on the four. Straight up the middle, has some running room. Look out. Brought down on the play by Eason Ramson as he takes it all the way up to the 38-yard line. A return of 37 yards as we look at quarterback Scott Frost. And Dave, he has been under such controversy this week. It's been unbelievable. People forget this is only his third game as quarterback for Nebraska. Well, quarterbacks get too much credit when things go well and too much blame when things go poorly. That's the bottom line, and he's experiencing that right now. He's the lightning rod. Now both coaches talking about how important the first five minutes of this game will be. Nebraska showing just brute strength on the ground. Amon Green picking up almost 10 yards, and I think that's what they're going to give him. Uh, they're just going to play a little smash mouth football, and Amon Green is going to be the beneficiary of that. They're going to run between the tackles behind that offensive line, and Green last year averaged 7.7 .7 a rush. This year, 4.5. Aaron Taylor will play guard as well as center this afternoon. Still trying to find the right combination, the right mix-up front with that talented offensive line. We'll look at the Colorado's defense in a moment. Second down, just about a foot to go. Green looking for the rooms, got the first down and six to spare. Let's take a look at that Colorado State defense. Adrian Ross, the right end, is the man to keep the eye on. Yeah, really. He's got two and a half sacks. He's got three tackles for losses. He's been a disruptor so far early in this football season. Kwame at the linebacker spot. He's the leading tackler, but he's got a dislocated shoulder. He's wearing a harness this afternoon. Could impair his tackling, obviously. McDougal, he took a ride in that first uh, snap against Green. He's going to play maybe a little offense in an emergency this afternoon, too. This time, the Colorado defense swarming. They had him, and now they lost him, and they got him again. What a big hit at the end. Damon Benning was the carrier. We saw Ross, number 44, come up and put the finishing touches on that little bad boy. You know, what, what Colorado State's doing here, they're, they're not really loading up the box on alignment. They've got seven people in the box, but their safeties are like extra linebackers. The outside linebackers are blowing up the field in a blitz, and the safeties are reading run. They're run support right away. The key for Colorado State is to tackle. Look how many missed tackles there before he was finally wrapped up and brought to the turf, even though it was thrown for a loss. Ross going to put it up for the first time, and it is complete and is good for a first down and then some. Brendan Holbein all the way down to the 18-yard line. Frost an unusual motion throwing the football, but he got the results. Well, there was, there was a missed tackle on the play that was uh, critical. Corner missed the tackle. Holbein, this is, this is what we're talking about, about simplify, build the confidence, a little roll, short pass, completable football, and watch the missed tackle right there. It took a terrible angle, didn't make a play on the football, is Tyrus Nunn. He didn't get it done at all, and that caused the compound of the problem. Benning tries the left side, and this time the Colorado defense, Colorado State defense stands tall. Sonny Lubick, the head coach of Colorado State, he has done what no other Colorado State coach has been able to do in the past history of their team. In three years, he's taken the program to their first ever WAC title back in 94, cracked the top 10 in that year, finished 14th in the nation. But this year, he's got a almost a complete redo on his defense. Frost on the option, pretty good pitch. They have some running room again, down to the 10-yard line, and is betting. Interesting, though, we talk about Amon Green. Benning, though, seems to be getting a lot of playing time here in the first quarter, and that is something that we expected, Dave. Well, down the football field, a big key in this football game is blocking down the field. And watch Holbein 
number five in the red jersey with the crackback block. He'll bring it inside, freeze it. That's the shot right there. Holbein throws the block on the crack, allows his man to get to the perimeter. Benning takes advantage of that block. That's the key to Nebraska downfield block. Here's Green trying the left side inside the five down to the three yard line. Willie Taylor and Nate Kwame, the linebackers, come up to make the stop. You talked about Holbein making that block. The coaches say he is one of the most tenacious blockers they have ever seen. Well, Ron, one thing that they do, pancake blocks in the offensive line. They, they keep track of those all season long. But they also like to keep track of the downfield blocks thrown by the wide receivers and the running backs blocking for each other. And they'll have as many as 100 people on the ground in an 85 play game. First and goal. Green is going to be stacked up at about the eight-yard line. Steve Trammell was the first one to make the hit. And McDougal came up to clean it up. Well, listen, that's McDougal. That's the call you make. What position does he play? Free safety. Where is he making the tackle? Three yards behind the line of scrimmage. I mean, that's what Colorado State's going to do. The, the free safety and strong safety, for all practical purposes, are extra linebackers in this football game. And they're going to fly up and run support like crazy. Second and goal. High formation again for Nebraska. A couple of tight ends. Frost is going to keep it. Has running room to the five. Stacked up and is going to be brought down. Kevin McDougal, a redshirt freshman out of Arveda, Colorado, comes up to make the hit. Well, McDougal's been very nosy in the running game. I'll tell you, this kid is very instinctive. Uh, he was a great running back in high school. They've moved him to the safety position, and all he does is make plays. He's like a lot of great football players. He can't tell you why he does some things he does. It's just instincts, and he's got it. Nebraska only 25% on third downs this year. They've got a third and goal ball sitting on the four. Cross has a man wide open. Touchdown, Cornhuskers. For Sean Jackson, the tight end. And we were talking about this, the no margin for error for Colorado State. Well, there was a serious error right there in coverage. There was a brain cramp. Either a linebacker or a safety did not make the adjustment in the formation to cover the tight end. He was 10 yards open. I'd say he was open. Yeah. Chris Brown to complete the seven-pointer, and he does just that. Nebraska very impressive on their first drive. It takes them less than four minutes. They lead it 7-0, and Big 12 football will continue after these local messages. 75,000 like the fact that Nebraska was impressive on their opening drive. They lead it 7-0 along with Dave Lappin. Brian Nooner is on the sidelines. We'll be checking in with him momentarily. I'm Ron Thulem. Chris Brown, the sophomore from South Lake, Texas, the first freshman last year, field goal kicker and kicker in Nebraska history to start. Short kick. It is going to be David Washington from the 10. No place to go as he makes his way up to about the 24-yard line. Ted Ratzliff on the tackle. Let's take a look at that touchdown again, Dave. Well, here's Jackson. He's the receiver that's open. Watch what the motion does to this defense. Watch everybody get sucked up inside, and there's nobody at the linebacker or safety level to cover in the back of the end zone. Jackson releases clean. Look, everybody's bunched up inside. One grenade gets them all. He had three guys he could have thrown the football to. He decided to throw to Jackson. That's a big play by Nebraska and a mental error defensively by Colorado State. Moses Moreno at the helm. Calvin Branch, the lone setback. This is a high-powered offense. Eli Workman in motion. Moreno has the time. Pass is complete. Up to the 46-yard line. Jeremy Calhoun, the six-foot senior from Long Beach, California. Boy, Moreno had a little zip on that ball. Oh, he, he can throw the Howards, so I'll tell you. He's got a tight spiral on that football. He's got a quick release, and he's got confidence in Calhoun because Calhoun was covered pretty well. And he threw the football in, and he said, Calhoun, fight for it. Battle for the football. It's yours when it's in the air. Calhoun did exactly that. He won the tug of war. Pickup of 23 on the play. Two tight ends in the lineup now for Colorado State. Moreno goes upstairs again. And again, it is complete to Jeff Turner, the Iowa State transfer. He's up to the 45-yard line, and he's in Nebraska territory. 
Pick up of almost 10 on a play. Let's take a look at the offense for Colorado State. Damon Washington, the fullback, number 20, he can run. He can run, and Calvin Branch, the other fullback, they messenger plays, and they're averaging eight yards per rush between the two of them. Up front, Rogo Rogowski, he's the only senior, very efficient, effective left tackle, and leader of the pack up front. Now they're going to measure, make sure it was a first down. It is awfully close. You know, Ron, the one thing Marino was doing on this first drive, three-step drop, ball's gone. It's going to be a five-step, quick five-step drop, ball's gone. Everything in a timing pattern. They've run two plays. They've thrown the football twice. It's going to be fire and fall back. It's going to be a different approach. Nebraska's going to approach this football game on the ground and then Colorado State in the air. And the key is, will Wistrom be able to pressure Moreno, pressure the quarterback? He's got three sacks this year. He had four all of last year. Jamel Williams, I tell you, he has been big time. He's a playmaker at the middle linebacker position for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Minter has got three interceptions in two games. That leads the country. Seven starters return to this offensive lineup for Colorado State. Last year they averaged 29 points a game. This year almost 40. They keep it on the ground, and they're able to pick up almost eight on the play. It is Calvin Branch. Last night, Dave Lay, the offensive coordinator for Colorado State, telling us, yes, we're going to throw the football, but we will not be su successful unless we run the football. That's right. And I, I do think they have to rush the ball for at least 100 yards in this football game. And Dave Lay is going to try to keep him off balance a little bit. He's got two different style of running backs. Branch, as we just saw, is a slasher. Smoked the whole run of Washington, more of a cutback guy. Second and two. Two tight ends again. Moreno, three stop, step drop. Pass is complete. Good for the first down. Again going to his tight end, Eli Workman. You got a flag on the play. There may be a roughing the quarterback. Let's take a look. That's what we got. Late hit on the quarterback. That's exactly what it's going to be against Nebraska. This, this offense, though, cannot afford to self-destruct, Dave. This is a great drive so far for Colorado State, but they have fumbled eight times this year. They've been penalized 31 for 282 yards, most of those coming on the offense. They can't afford any type of mistakes. Small margin of error for their offense. Right on, Ron. And the defense had a big error on the touchdown pass, an assignment mistake there. Dropping the pass up against the defense. Automatic first down. But like you say, Colorado State is responding to Nebraska pounding the football down their throat on the first drive. Let's take a look at the hit. I think it might be Wistrom that gets the late hit. No, it's the cornerback on the blitz. The outside, Jamel Williams at the linebacker level, I should say, gets the late hit. He took two steps and piled into Moreno after the ball was gone. First and 10, ball on the 14 for Colorado State. Low setback. Gets the pass off, they get a playoff, flag on the play. A lot of people moving on the line of scrimmage. Uh, I think he had the right tackle, Bailey, move early for Colorado State. Tomich got up and pointed and said, you know, he, hey, look, he's moving. He broke out of his three-point stance. I think this may cost him five yards. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. Kill second down. Let's take a look at who I'm talking about here. Now, once you get in a three-point stance, you can't move a muscle. This is him right here. Let's see what he does at the top of the, the top of the screen if he flinches a little bit. Ah, yeah, he does. He, he, he resets himself, but that's too big of a flinch. Turner late to check into the lineup for Colorado State. Ronald Antoine comes out. Two tight ends again with Scholl and Workman. First and 15 ball on the 19-yard line. Washington drives the right side, cuts back inside the 15, down to about the 10. Pick up of nine on the play. Wistrom on the tackle. Well, one thing that Colorado State's going to do is they're going to try to run the football, just a little zone blocking inside. That time they ran what they call the counter gap. Watch the backside guard pull and kick out the backside tackle, take it up inside. The guard pulls, gets his trap tackle, takes it up inside. That's blocked very well, and they pick up significant yardage. Second and eight for Moses Moreno, the junior quarterback from Chula Vista, California. Great protection. Lofts it into the end zone. Nobody's there except the cheerleaders. Well, Tomich doesn't get a quarterback sack, but he gets the hurry. And uh, he, he's the one that made Moreno throw the football soon. I thought he might have gotten clipped, but it was outside the pocket. 
The Thomas defeats his man up front at the line of scrimmage. Then he just hustles, hustles. This kid's motor goes 100 miles an hour every single play. And boy, does he want a Charlie McBride's favorite one. Boy, he does. He said he just gives 100% every down, even in practice. He said it's a thank you for giving him a chance to come play at Nebraska. Every snap, it's thank you for giving me my opportunity. Third down and eight, seventh play of the drive for Colorado State. Moreno has had success throwing a football, this time a little bit too much on it. Intended for Turner, the junior wide receiver from Urbandale, Iowa. Yeah, that one released, that one sailed on him a little bit. His release point was a little bit high, and the ball stayed high. And this is what we were talking about as one of the musts for Colorado State. You can't settle for field goals. You have to pump it in the end zone because Nebraska already has. But Moreno, as he takes his five-step drop, Tomich once again trying to pressure him from the outside. The release point's high. No chance. Well over the head of Turner. No opportunity for a play there. Matt McDougal for the field goal. And it is blocked. Grant Wistrom, I believe, may have gotten his hand on the football. But, Dave, we talked about that they have a small margin of error. That was a big one. You drive all that way, and you got a goose egg on the scoreboard. That's right. You settle for a field goal opportunity. Your offense doesn't finish it off, and then your kicking game lets you down. 7-0 is our score. Nebraska blocks the field goal. We'll be back right after this word from Dr. Pepper, proud sponsor of the Big 12 championship game. He was third-team All-American last year, wasn't he, AP? 7-0 is our score. Wistrom, third team, All-American last year, according to AP. He comes up with a big block. Yeah, he really did. And, uh, you know, there are three components to, the, to a field goal. Snap good, hold good, low kick, though. Kicker knew it right away. And let's take a look at Hess and Wistrom. They both leap to block it up the middle. Uh, due to the low kick, Hess and Wistrom, not great penetration. They just got airborne. He didn't get enough loft. It didn't come off his foot like a wedge. It came off his foot like a three iron, and Wistrom batted it to the ball like a, uh, to the ground like a volleyball player. Well, Nebraska takes over. First and 10 on their own 14-yard line. They had an impressive drive the first time they had the football. That probably took a lot of pressure off young Scott Frost. They're going to keep it on the ground again. He's got a convoy in front of him. Up to the 25-yard line for Nebraska. I'm on green again. Brian Nooner is roaming the sidelines here at Memorial Stadium. Let's check in with him right now. Brian? I have to tell you that the crowd noise played a big part on that uh, last defensive stands, the defense itself. Last week against Arizona State, Nebraska had fits with the crowd noise at Sun Devil Stadium. They couldn't get the checks of the line. That penalty for Colorado State directly attributed to the fact that Marino could not hear the call. That's a good point, Brian. Now they, they, they face the hostile environment. Again, it is green. Thursday's practice day when we were here watching, they did pipe crowd sound into Memorial Stadium. They said they do it a lot, but even the coaches admitted, we got it a little bit higher on Thursday. Yeah, and what happens, Ron, if, if you're an offensive lineman and your only advantage is taken away, your only advantage against a better athlete across from you in the defensive line is the snap count. When you can't hear the snap count, you have to look at the football and move when it moves like the defensive lineman. You are in trouble, and that's what happened in Nebraska out in Arizona State. And their linemen, I think all the coaches agreed, they were back on their heels so much in that game. Frost on the option, has the first down or close to it. He had some indecision against Arizona State. Some pitches were bad, which he admitted, but today he's run the option very well. Let's take a look at, uh, at Dishman, the big left guard here, Ron. Here he is right here. Watch the big fella pull, and watch what he does when he gets down the football field. Now this is 300 pounds plus. Look at him redirecting himself in traffic. Now he's trying to run down the little guys. Squash. There he goes. It's just push him right to the turf, and you're digging turf out of your fingernails. That's a big guy redirecting himself well in space. Got to get the first down. Well, Nebraska definitely recruits skilled people, but I think it would be safe to say they build offensive linemen. They've got guys they saw playing basketball, thought they had agility, they had some size, said, you can play offensive line for Nebraska. I'll tell you what, th these guys are 300-pound people that aren't real tall. I mean, a lot of them 6'2", you know, 6'1". They're movable refrigerators, you know? And when you, have, when you have a refrigerator that can redirect itself out in the open field, if you're a cornerback that, you know, that isn't even a, a mini refrigerator, you're in trouble. They got the first down, first and 10, ball on the 36-yard line. Cross changing the play at the line of scrimmage. 
but they'll keep it on the ground, and Colorado State is there to meet them after a pickup of about two on the play. Green now getting the workhorse job. Let's take a look at the Dr. Pepper roundup. A couple of scores to pass on to you. Miami, Sonny Lubick was the defensive coordinator there a couple of years ago. They lead. Clemson on top of Wake Forest, 7-0. That is in the second. And Navy by five over Boston College. We'll keep you posted on scores throughout today. Boy, BC is a Jekyll and Hyde team. They get smoked by Virginia Tech. They play well against Michigan, and now Navy's up on them this week. Boy, they're up and down. Aren't they like a yo-yo? Big time. Second and eight for Nebraska. Frost looking to throw it. Across the middle, pass is almost picked off. Intended for Sheldon Jackson, the tight end. You know, if you weren't run the football as well as Nebraska does, you can throw the football off of play action a little bit. We showed you Dishman pulling out in front of the running play. Let's take a look at him right here as he pulls out in this little play action pass. It's a little trap action up front. He traps the defensive end, just keeps him away from Scott Frost long enough to deliver the football down the middle of the field. I think that's his first incompletion, isn't it? It is. Third down and eight. 534 left in the first. Nebraska leading 7-0. Frost again. Oh, Pat is, pass is knocked down. Frost completes it to himself. Not much running room, and he's going to be brought down at the 25-yard line. Adrian Ross came up with the deflection of the pass, the 6'3 junior from Elk Grove, California. Well, hindsight's always 20-20, but we, what you do if you're Frost is just spike it to the ground. Don't catch it. You know, spike the thing, knock the thing down to the ground. Once Ross knocks it up in the air, it's a free ball. And he knocks it up in the air. His teammate doesn't realize where the ball is. Frost should have just knocked it right to the turf right there and cut his losses because you lose yardage here. If he knocks it to the ground, it comes back to the line of scrimmage instead of taking the loss. Well, the screen pass didn't get enough arc on it. If you look at Jesse Cush, the six-foot junior from Columbus, Nebraska, averaging just about 45 yards a kick. Ooh. Jeff Turner's backed up all the way to the 14. He heads to his left. He is knocked down at about the 34-yard line. Pickup of 20 on the play, and that is where Colorado State will take over first and 10. 5-10 left in the first. Huskers lead it by a touchdown. You are looking at Terrell Farley, the senior from Columbus, Georgia. He is back in Nebraska's lineup. Did not play the first couple of games. He is a welcome addition. Let's send it down to Brian Nooner, Brian. That's right. Terrell was cleared to play after a two-game suspension. He violated team policy when he was arrested for driving under the influence. And as you mentioned, Tom Osborne sat him down for the first two tilts. He did not play. He did not play in that first defensive series, but he is in there now. And this is a big boost to Nebraska's defense because he's a Butkus Award candidate and an All-American. And, Brian, I'll tell you, our offensive coordinator, Dave Lay, mentioned to us last night that he feels fears Farley more than any other defensive player on the football field for Nebraska because he's a linebacker that runs 10, 500 meters. I mean, they can all fly. He returned two of three interceptions for touchdowns last year as the Big 8 defensive newcomer of the year. Play action pass. Moreno going for it all and has it knocked down incomplete. Jeremy Calhoun, the intended receiver, the true freshman, Ralph Brown out of Hacienda Heights, California, on the coverage. Coaches felt that Brown was going to be picked on. They're going to, they're going to test Brown a little bit. You have a true freshman back there, but he makes a nice recovery on the football. And this ball hung up a little bit too much air under it. If Marino could have led his receiver just slightly, Tomich gets a little bit of a hit as he releases the football. If he just could lead Calhoun just a little bit more, but Brown makes a nice recovery and breaks the pass up. Gets his head turned to make a play on the ball. Nice effort. David Washington, the low setback once again. A couple of tight ends for Colorado State on first and ten, or second and ten. Washington crossing the 35 up to about the 36. Charlie McBride is the defensive coordinator for Nebraska. He has been there a long time. He is a good one. He wanted to make Colorado State a one-dimensional team. Yeah, and he's done that the first couple of weeks his defensive unit has run. I mean, Michigan State, they didn't rush the ball all that well. I mean, they had 2.7 per rush, or Michigan State had 1.7 per rush. Arizona State, 2.7. So Charlie McBride, his defensive unit has played the run very, very well. Well, it had a few problems here and there in the passing game, a couple of assigned mistakes, but they will shut you down on the ball. Charlie McBride, one of the great ones. Moreno set the throw, and he is going to be dropped. The 12th sack given up by Colorado State's offense, the 14th sack by Nebraska's defense. Wistrom with his fourth of the year, first of the game. 
I'll tell you, the reason that Colorado State's going with two tight ends quite a bit, as you've called during the course of the game, run, is to try to pass protect against Wistrom and Tomage. The reason they were able to get to the quarterback, look at the coverage down the football field. You got a man underneath with a safety over the top, nowhere to go with the ball. Then watch Wistrom, gets the outside edge, sack. Tomich and Wistrom meet at the quarterback, both meet, beat their respective tackles. You're going to have to keep a tight end in there or a running back to help protect. McDougal set to kick it away. It'll be a short kick. Nebraska's going to let it bounce. Colorado State will down it. They'll mark it at about the 29-yard line. That's where they will begin. First and 10, still in the first quarter, 328. We were talking to the coaches, Dave, about Scott Frost and the criticism he took, and, and a lot of the linemen stood up for him. They said this was a team loss last week to Arizona State. Yes, Scott maybe not have played that well, but they really wanted him to come out this first quarter and do something to take these 75,000 eyes off from her, 150,000 eyes, I guess I should say. Yeah, and I'll tell you, Ron, taking them on a sustained drive and throwing a touchdown pass on their first possession is just what the doctor ordered. That's ordered. That's a nice tonic. Keep it on the ground with Green up over the 30, down to the 31 yard line. Well, Tom Osborne admits that Scott Frost is the best they have at quarterback, so you might as well get used to him and like him. Well, if you look at professional football, of course, that's not the greatest standard, but most professional teams figure it takes uh, three, four years to, to get a guy to where he knows the system well enough to play. And uh, around here, you don't have that much time because, you know, they're gone in three or four years. But I think mean, it, it certainly does make a difference. So uh, if you've started for a year and you play 10, 11 games, uh, you're, you're obviously a lot, a lot more aware of a lot of things. And so uh, at this stage, I think Scott's doing well. And uh, the problem was it was a tough environment against a very good football team. And uh, we also had just enough breakdowns around Scott that uh, – some of which uh, he had nothing to do with that uh, it caused the offense not to move very well. So anyway, the, you know, quarterback is kind of a lightning rod position because that guy handles the ball every play. People assume that if you score a lot of points, it was the quarterback that did it, which isn't necessarily true. And if things don't work out well, then it's the quarterback that didn't do it. So uh, it's, a, it's just a difficult position to play. Well, even Scott Frost admitted that he wanted to be able to practice at a higher level this week. And I think he did. But more importantly, I think he's showing a lot more confidence, especially on the option today. Well, he is. And he just ran a nice little uh, option right there, made a good decision. That's the key in this Nebraska offense. They have to make decisions in the option, snap second decisions. They have to get them out of bad plays into good ones because the running game is so sophisticated. It's a mental challenge to play quarterback as well as physical challenge here at Nebraska. And the other problem that Scott Frost is dealing with replacing a living legend. Tommy Frazier may have been the best college football quarterback running the option ever and it's like trying to replace Johnny Unitas the next quarterback after Johnny Unitas with the Colts. You can't live up to that high standard. It's very tough. On third and short Frost keeps it gets the first down and Nebraska moves up to the 42 yard line. They will have first and 10. Well this is this is what uh, this is what we're talking about with an offensive line, though. This is what you lick your chops for. Let's take a look at Aaron Taylor at the center position. Snap the football, come off the line of scrimmage, get under the pads, lift, and then mm, <laughs> move some people off the line of scrimmage. I'll tell you what, that's the John Deere Earth movers up front at their best, just root hogging people out of there. 6'3, 303 pound is the average for that line of Nebraska. Frost looks down the middle, has a receiver wide open and complete. Brendan Holbein was there, and Scott put a little bit too much on it. Yeah, let him just a little too much, and like you say, Ron, maybe not enough air under the ball to allow Holbein to run under it. But, boy, it was there. And the reason that it's there, Cheatham trying to make a, a, a play on it, the reason that it's there, look at the safeties again. They're within five, seven yards of the line of scrimmage. Little play action fake to freeze them, and you have a corner that gave up an inside release with no safety help in the middle. And that's when you run the ball effectively. The play action pass can kill you. That was Kenny Cheatham, the intended receiver. Green around the left side. Stutter steps, stays on his feet, gets the first time, and there he goes. Inside the 30, down to the 29-yard line. This guy, he's a tremendously gifted athlete. He was running like he was a tripod right there. I mean, Jones made the play on it. Let's take a look at Green. 
here. He gets the pitch. Watch Jones misses the tackle originally. Watch Jones come up right here. Green freezes him. Then he misses the tackle. Look at him put his right hand down and balance him like a tripod. Hustles down the field. Who makes the play down the football field, though? He doesn't quit. Back comes Jones. That's good hustle, you know. Pickup of 29. Frost wants to complete this drive. Gets it out of the flat, and it is incomplete. Now that's the type of pass they wanted to get Scott Frost get his confidence back. Little short route to his fullback out of the backfield. Have some completion, start to build some numbers, start to generate some confidence, and just didn't throw that ball quite well enough. Well, one thing the coaches wanted to do this game also is reduce their number of plays, use less audibles. They felt that not that it was confusing, but they just almost wanted to simplify it a little bit for Frost. Absolutely. Do a few things well and then build on that. Big hole up the middle. Green stood up, but he drags the defender about three yards. And that was that was a, a McDougal, I think, that, uh, that took that ride, or was it? Uh, maybe it was Eric Olson who took that ride on that one. You better give a token up for that ride because look at the red seat part right here. Center and guard just split it. Fullback gets a nice block on the linebacker level. Look at this ride taken right here. Boy, you can't take green on high like that. I mean, that's like you're at the circus. Boy, you, Olsen's going to get underneath him, wrap his legs up, and take him to the turf. You can't play high like that. He's off the field right now. Three freshmen in the secondary for Colorado State. The only one with experience really is Eason Ramson at that left cornerback spot. We have an official timeout. He got an injury over there uh, trying to work it. He worked his way off the field to the Nebraska sideline under his own power, but I think that's the reason they called the timeout. And it's Amon Green that's, uh, I don't know what his problem is, but boy, is he running the football 71 yards on 11 attempts. One of three players last year as a freshman to go over 1,000 yards rushing the football. And considering last year he started, last on the depth chart at that IPAC position for Nebraska. I'll tell you what, the kid averaged 7.7 .7 yards per rush. He ran for 13 touchdowns and, and, and caught passes for three more. I, you know, Green must have been on that effort that he hurt himself a little bit. Frost takes a couple of big licks at the 22-yard line, and on third down and two, he will be short of the first down. Fans want him to go for it. That might not be too bad of a call, though, Dave. You're playing at home. Yeah. Your defense is playing okay, particularly against the run. You know, you're at the 20-yard line. Uh, why not go for it? You make a statement here. Dominate early. Eliminate. Erase any doubts you may have in your mind as an offensive unit and make a statement to Colorado State early. Jeff Lake split wide to the left. I formation. And that's the end of the first quarter. They're not going to be able to get the playoff, so maybe Dr. Tom Osborne just wanted to have a couple more seconds to think about it. Scott Frost has played well. Tom Osborne's horse, Huskers have played well, and they lead 7-0. We'll be back right after this word from Sitco. Look for the sign of quality throughout Big 12 country. Sitco says go. We've played 15 minutes in Lincoln, Nebraska, and the Huskers lead at 7 0. Sonny Lubick, the head coach of Colorado State, was hoping it would be close after the first quarter. He wouldn't mind a 7 0 score. Uh, we've got to go out there, and I was just talking to one of the coaches, told, told a couple of players that uh, we've got to come out of the first qu quarter in good shape. But, you know, I wouldn't even be concerned if, it's, if we're down 7 0 at the quarter. But it can't be something like uh, they've got steam rolling, they're running back punts and blocking punts and all those things because they are so darn well coached and, and have so much talent on special teams. That's about as big a concern as everything else. Then defensively, can we slow them down? That's going to be a real ingredient. We have to find a way to do that early in the game. Yes, yeah, I agree with Sonny. It's 7-0, but it's not a good 7-0. Nebraska's blocked a Colorado State field goal, and their running backs have rushed for 104 yards in the first quarter. On fourth and two, Frost goes over the oh. fully complete, and he had the man wide open. Threw it behind Sheldon Jackson. Oh, I tell you, young Scott Frost would probably want that one back. Yeah, that's uh, that's all the quarterback right there. You can't, there's no other blame to be shared on that one. He just absolutely threw the football behind his intended target, Sheldon Jackson. And it's well executed up front, little play action pass. I don't know if he expected Jackson to settle down right there, but Jackson was just taking it to the uh, corner of the end zone. He was wide open then. He's been open, his tight end's been open for him all afternoon. Scott Frost isn't in a throwing rhythm yet. Well, there is a sea of red here at Memorial 
Stadium. Let's see if this Moses can part the sea of red. They keep it on the ground, crosses the 25 up to the 26 yard line. Damon Washington, the ball carrier out of San Diego, California. Coaches say he is the best pure back. Well, this kid's rushed for over 100 yards three times already during the course of the season. He's averaging 7.8 yards per rush. Branch is averaging nine yards. These two fullbacks have combined for over 800 yards already this season and 10 touchdowns rushing. This is a team that averages 499 yards a game. Once again, two tight ends. Nebraska may have jumped off sides and keep it on the ground up to the 31-yard line. It is Calvin Branch. Another transfer from Iowa State, more of a slashing type runner as you were talking about, Dave. A little different style between Washington and Branch. And that's good. It gives them a little bit of a, a change up to the defense. They can't get honed in on one style of rush. But Wistrom that time, I think, was one of the guys that jumped in the neutral zone. You can't guess the snap count. You can't listen to the quarterback. You have to move when the football moves, and not until then. Peripherally, you have to look inside. You can't listen to the quarterback, and that's exactly what was taking place there. Too many people listening to the quarterback's cadence, and he'll get you with that voice inflection, that non-rhythmic count. Outside, on the defense, five-yard penalty, first down. And Charlie McBride's not going to like that. That's the type of thing that, that you don't want to have happen. You don't want to have any type of self-destruction defensively at all. That brings up a first and 10 ball on the 32. Let's see if Moreno goes upstairs. The coaches at Nebraska really felt that Colorado State has more speed at wide receiver than Arizona State did. Moreno straight drop has a man in the flat. It is incomplete off his shoulder pad. Jeremy Calhoun who didn't even play high school football bumping around on that corner in a big way with Ralph Brown. Yeah well, let's take a look at Brown. Brown makes a makes a play on the football. Now does he contact the receiver before the arrival of the ball. That may be what Colorado State's talking about a little bit. Field judge reached for his flag. Jocelyn going around uh, down there on the on the field. Brown gives the big cushion. It's at the top of the screen. Brown's off the line of scrimmage. He gives a cushion. Now he plants and breaks on it. He goes through the receiver to make a play on the ball. No flag thrown. Turner wide to the right. Branch the lone setback. Second and ten. Branch dragged down at the 35-yard line. Pickup of about three on the play, setting up a third down and seven situation. You know, Ron, one play to circle on your play-by-play -play sheet out there, though, is fourth down. Tom Osborne decides to go for it. He throws the football. Scott Frost has his tight end wide open. Sheldon Jackson's wide open for a touchdown that would have made it 14 nothing. Throws the ball behind him, and because it's fourth down, turns the football over on downs to Colorado State, and they stay in this football game. That's a huge play right now. That and the fact that Colorado State had a field goal block after a wonderful right. dr opening drive. Right. Third and seven. Moreno being oh. pressured, and he is going to be dropped for the second time this afternoon. Wistrom and Tomich coming in from those end spots could possibly be the best two defensive ends in the Big 12 and in college football for that matter. Well, I'll tell you, the bookends were bookends right there. They met at the quarterback for the second time. And watch how tight they come off the corner. And he ran a little bit of a stun. He took it outside to the tight end. The tight end was in the slow block, and Thomas just ran right around him. Actually, three guys met at the quarterback. It was a total collapse of the pocket. Saltzman got involved in that quarterback sack also. Boy, it was a big, big tidal wave to the quarterback. And Mac McDougal, first punt, went about 40 yards. He'll try another. Standing at about the 13-yard line. Three back for Nebraska. A short kick again. It is Fullman, and he is going to be hog-tied and dropped to the canvas at about the 32. Jeff Turner, the wide receiver, makes the stop. 12-16 left in the first half, and Nebraska leads at 7-zip. Nebraska leads 7-0, but some bad news maybe for Colorado State. Their leading receiver, Jeff Turner, the transfer from Iowa State, he was injured on that last play, and we have it perfectly on this replay. Yeah, he's he's on the punt team. He's covering punts. Look at him on the ground, number one. He right there hyperextends his left shoulder, jams his left shoulder into the turf, and that's what they're working on right now. I wonder if it's sublux that might have popped out a little bit. Not a total dislocation, but sublux a little bit. Well, let's take a look at the Southwest Airlines storyline. Southwest Airlines, low fares, every flight, every season. 
seat every day. Frost with 24 yards rushing, which is good because in the first two games combined, he had only 51. Moreno was hot early on, three of seven for 41 yards, but they have cooled off since then as they're trying to establish some type of running game. Nebraska takes over ball on the 34, first and 10, 12 16 left in the first half. They keep it on the ground with Damon Benning. Well, Nebraska felt that all the teams they face this year are probably going to put eight and nine men in the box, and Colorado State was no different. They wanted to walk the safeties up. Sonny Lubick said, We want to show them a lot of people on the line. Well, let's take a, a block. Let's take a look at a block by a fullback Schuster on a linebacker Kwame. Now the offensive line does a good job up front. They get the position. Watch the fullback come in. Boom. Cuts the linebacker right to the turf. That's a knockdown. That's what the uh, offensive coaches from Nebraska was talking about. Receivers and running backs block. A uh, second down and one. Willie Taylor comes up with a crushing blow. May not have gotten the first down. In fact, he probably lost about a foot and a half on the play. Now, look at Taylor's left hand. He's wearing a cast on that hand, but the way he puts the head across the bow here, it doesn't matter. Boom. He wraps that cast up, takes him to the turf. I mean, you got one linebacker with a broken hand, the other linebacker with a dislocated shoulder, and they're out there giving every ounce of effort they can. I'll tell you what, they may be a little bit undisciplined, they may be a little bit inexperienced, but they certainly don't lack effort. Carpenter and Jackson, the tight ends, the pitch back to Benning. Gets the first down and four to spare before Kevin McDougal, the redshirt freshman, corrals him. Brian, you have an injury report for us. Well, we checked on Jeff Turner, and he's going to be fine. He's going to be back, just a little soreness in that shoulder, but they said he'll be back in that next offensive series for Colorado State. That's good news because he is a, a weapon in the in the passing game. There's no doubt about that. He's the second guy in school history that's had three consecutive games of 100 yards or more in reception. So he's a key component out there in the passing attack, no doubt. First and ten for the Huskers. Frost play action pass. Swings it off for a little screen pass. Colorado State had it covered exceptionally well. What an effort out there by Adrian Ross. Man, I'll tell you, it was a throwback screen, and Ross had, would had, have none of it. He played his defensive responsibility to a T. He's the defensive end. He locks up on the tackle. He sees the throwback screen materializing here. He gets right in the middle of it, bursts through the blockers, and throws the play for a loss one-on-one -on -one against Amon Green. That's a gold star on the forehead right there. Loss of seven on the play. Dave Lay, the defensive coordinator for Colorado State, felt they needed to take chances defensively because they are so outmanned size-wise and experience-wise. Cross upstairs in the flat, complete. Short of the first down is John Vedrill, the 5'11 senior out of Gregory, South Dakota. 23 states are represented in that Nebraska lineup, Dave, as far as overall uh, player roster. That is quite, quite a player base. Well, it's a national power. And it's a national power in recruiting also. That's what back-to-back -back national championships and really a 47-yard field goal that's just wide left. They lose 18-16 to Florida State or it would be back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back national championships. When you build that kind of momentum, everybody wants to come to your school. And this offense has nine homegrown Nebraskans starting. Frost on the option, has the first down. Pitches may have been a forward pitch, and that will not be a touchdown. You're right. Crowd might as well get quiet. The penalty flag has been thrown right in front of them. And there's another flag at the goal line. Let's see if we've got something going on there. Two flags. There's a flag that finishes off the run, and there's a flag up front for the illegal pitch. It may be two penalties against Nebraska, and Colorado State will have their choice. But the forward pitch may nullify everything. I mean, the, the other penalty is inconsequential unless it's some kind of personal foul deal. Well, the idea was good by Frost. Yeah, you can't. You, once you're in front of the line of scrimmage, you can't. You can't pitch the ball forward like that. We'll listen in, see what the call is. We have an illegal forward pass against the offense. We have a five-yard face mask against the defense. Oh, it's against the defense. Penalties off. Wow. Oh, we my. play third down. Well, that certainly helps Nebraska's cause. Big time. That hurts Colorado State. Yeah, and I think the face mask penalty occurred at, at the goal line by a very aggressive defensive player, Kevin McDougal. 
who wasn't giving up on the play. He had no idea that it was an illegal pitch. He's trying to prevent a touchdown. Let's take a look at it as we take it down the football field. Frost turns it up and throws the ball forward. There's no doubt about it. It's about two yards forward. And then McDougal has his penalty offset. Frost has a man in the flat. They've got the first down. Up to the 35, down to the 33-yard line. Frost on the money with that pass. Big tight end again for Sean Jackson. A junior from Omaha, Nebraska. A guy that rebuilt his body in the Nebraska weight room. I mean, he was he was a candidate for weightlifter of the year. And about every participant in the Nebraska weight program is a candidate. Oh, yeah. They really do a job in that weight room. It's outstanding. Boyd Epley, their strength and conditioning coach, the former pole vaulter here at Nebraska. 30,000 square foot weight room. It is huge. Wow. Great drop. No, hands it off to Mon Green. Crosses the 25 down to the 22 yard line. Ransom on the tackle. Great cutback, great vision by Green, and Holbein at the wide receiver level throws another nice downfield block, but you never know where a talented eye back is going to break the run. This was not designed to go to the right side. It was designed to go off to the left, but look at the cavity on the right side. Great backside blocking, and Holbein gets a block down the football field. When you have a talented back, eight yards back in the eye formation, he can bust it anywhere. You get a sustained block. 86 yards already on the ground for Amon Green. Green this time trips up at the 20 down to the 19 yard line. Well, Nebraska is going back to what they've done well for so many years, Ron, and that's smash mouth football. Get the offensive line coming off the line of scrimmage, kind of build a little bit of confidence. They rush for over 100 yards as a group in the first quarter. That's on pace for a 400 yard rushing day, which is almost what they averaged right. last year. Second best in school history, but led the country. And this football team has been built on just hammering you at the line of scrimmage. Only 226 yards versus Arizona State last week. They may get that in the first half. Some running room down to the 10. Pater, Nebraska. That's Benny. Damon Benning taking it the final few yards, saw that pylon and headed right towards it. And they wanted to get better play out of the eye back in the offense, Ron. And are they getting it? Nebraska now has rushed 25 times for 152 yards. And Benning is capable of doing everything that Amon Green can do for this football team at the eye back. Boy, it's great to have the luxury of two talented players back there. Chris Brown tacks on the extra point. So Nebraska with seven in the first, seven here in the second. Nine plays, 66 yards for the Huskers. They lead 14-0. We'll be back right after this word from Dr. Pepper. Just what the doctor ordered. Damon Benning, his first touchdown of the year. He takes it in to give Nebraska a 14-0 lead with 8.20 left to play in the first half. That offensive line with some wonderful blocks here in this first two quarters of play. Yeah, they're starting to engulf some people up front, Ron. They're really starting to establish themselves at the line of scrimmage. Colorado State not that deep defensively. And Nebraska might just be wearing them down already. Great point. Brown's kick is going to be well into the end zone. And they will not try to run it out. Let's take a look at what happened up front. The Cornhusk is doing an excellent job on this touchdown run by Benning. Center reaches, guard pulls, tackle blocks down, tight end blocks down. You got an unblocked linebacker that Benning just runs away from. Watch everybody consume their blocks, and he runs right away from the linebacker who can't make a play on it, and that's Willie Taylor. And Benning just turns on the Jets, and it's inside the pylon. Ransom, Ransom can't catch him either. Great blocking up front, and then great execution, acceleration by the eye back. It is still early, but this would have to be considered an important drive for Colorado State. Center we have, we have exactly, Dave. Yeah, he double clutched. Double pumped it. Hey, Put him back a couple more yards. He picked the ball up. He was a count early. You know, and uh, he, he, he wasn't, he, he moved the ball on, on one and the snap count was two. That is Mike Newell from Littleton, Colorado, the center. Dead ball, illegal snap on the offense, five yard penalty, still first down. Newell realizes right 
you know, he's made a mistake. He starts moving the ball, double clutches it. I mean, you, know, you can't, once you start moving the ball, you just have to finish it. You can't start your snap, stop it, and restart it. That's a legal procedure. Dave Lay, the offensive coordinator for Colorado State. First and 15, the ball is on the 15 yard line. Moreno had success in the first drive, throwing a football and picks up where he left off there. That'll be a first down for the Rams. Eli Workman on the reception, the junior from Billings, Montana. Well, I'll tell you, Ron, this was a great release and great accuracy on this pass from Moreno. Good blocking up front, gives him vision in the pocket. He slides a little bit, throws between people. He just puts it right in, in the midst of three Cornhusker defenders. And that's what he's got to do a little better, is slide and find a spot to throw. They put it up again. He has a man and is incomplete, and he may have gotten away with just a little bit of a push. Jeremy Calhoun, the intended receiver. I am very impressed, though, with Moses Moreno. I don't know about you. We talked to his dad last night. He's very proud of his son. He's got a younger brother yeah. and a 6'3", 235 linebacker everybody wants. He's still in high school. Yeah, Notre Dame, Southern Cal. I mean, everybody wants his, his, and that's the way you have to put it, not little brother, younger brother, the kids, of course. <laughs> and then he's got another son, 13-year-old, that's a, a great player at that level of football. So the Moreno boys will be around a while. Dad was a very proud papa last night. Absolutely. This time, Moses is going to hand it off. They keep it on the ground. Calvin Branch is going to be stopped by Jeff Ogard, the senior out of St. Paul, Nebraska. Ogard, an interesting story. He was really nervous before his first start of the year against Michigan State. He said, I almost got sick to my stomach. I wasn't sure about starting and being the man at that left tackle spot. He gets double teamed a lot, and Charlie McBride really feels that's kind of a dirty job he's got down there. And he does it well, though, Ron. He's a sequoia. He's 6'6", 310 pounds, and he can't uproot the guy. He, he really does a good job job stuffing the run at the line of scrimmage. Third down and seven. Daryl Ballard split wide to the left. One setback. Nebraska showing blitz. They keep it on the ground. Penalty flag is thrown. Nebraska lined up off sides. They came into the neutral zone. And uh, I think it was Jamel Williams, that linebacker, that, that came across the line of scrimmage early, Ron. They were bringing him. One way people don't realize, too, Dave, I don't think, and you might want to explain it, that one way to beat the blitz sometimes is running the football. It doesn't hurt. There's no doubt if you find a crease and linebackers are blitzing, there's nobody there to make a play on it. Watch Williams. He tries to time it. Oh, a little soon. Get back. No, nope, too late. <laughs> I'm in the neutral zone. That's going to cost me five. So much for quick feet. Yeah. <laughs> yep. He runs a 10-300, though, Jamel Williams. So he's quick. We do know that. Listen in on the call. Offside on the defense. Five-yard pin. Play third down. You know what, Ron? All these linebackers were high school running backs, and, and on defense, they were defensive backs. They can all run. They, got, they just beefed them up a little bit. They all run 10 3 to 10 500 meters, and they're playing linebacker. They've got incredible team speed. Jeremy Calhoun wide to the left. Turner wide to the right. Lone setback on third and two, or third and five. Moreno is hit hard. The mouthpiece comes yeah. out. Yeah. Knocked his mouthpiece farther than he went. Whew. Boy, did he take a shot. But, you know, talking to Moses yesterday, he said, you know, I like to be hit. Doesn't bother me. I don't know if he likes to be hit that hard. I'm telling you. Put the mouthpiece back in, Mo. That'll bring up a fourth down situation and two. Watch the twisting up front. The defensive tackles twisting, and they're reestablishing different rush lanes. And Moreno tries to slide into a crease, but just can't quite get there. And that's, once again, the team speed everywhere of Nebraska. They have great closing speed. They finish plays. McDougal back to kick again. Three deep for Nebraska. They have eight on the line. with time this one he gets it way up in the air it'll be Fullman all the way uh -oh. back he fumbles it down to the two yard line and that's where he's going to be done wow Colorado State wanted a safety but instead they're going to get it at the one yard line Nebraska first and ten and that's one thing that Colorado State was hoping they may have a shot at they, they they're good at special teams they invest a lot of time working on special teams they wanted to make something happen on special teams well it really wasn't necessarily anything they did it was just a muff of a punt but they are there to, to make a play on it, and it was followed up very well by Jones. But the, really, the, the, the problem is Fullman not handling the ball. He muffed the punt. Now they have to go the length of the field. 57 yards on the kick. 14-0. The Huskers lead. 
First man through, crosses the five-yard line up to the seven-yard line. Brian Schuster, the fullback, 5'11 senior from Fullerton, Nebraska. Well, this is one area when you've got a mismatch up front, you've got a bigger offensive line with the defensive seven presented to you, hammer them right between the tackles. Out there in Arizona State last week in, the, in that hostile environment, they tried to run an option and pitch the ball, couldn't get the audible and pitch the ball through the end zone for a safety. Play it safe. Benning dancing his way close to the 10-yard line. McDougal coming up from that free safety spot to make the hit. One thing that Sonny Lubick wanted from his defense was not only playing hard, but he said they had to play smart. This was a great opportunity for his defense to grow up. And they're young. And they're giving up 500 yards a game, but they're giving effort. There's not anybody out there that's quitting. Last week, they overcame five turnovers by their offensive unit and still won the football game because of defensive play. Third and one. Oh, oh that's going to be close. He may have gotten up to the 11-yard line is wh where they needed to get for the first down. Devon Hawkins, the junior from Quincy, Illinois, comes up with a stop. And this is the guy with the most potential on the front seven. He's just got to start playing up to that potential, and, and he makes a play right there that holds Nebraska from converting a, a big third down opportunity. So now Colorado State is going to get the football in good field position. I mean, they may get it on Nebraska's side of the football field and have a short field to work with. Now Colorado State's going to put 10 men on the line as Jesse Cush back to, back to kicking away. He had a 61-yarder earlier. Ronald Antoine, the lone man to receive the punt. A little off to the side, almost blocked. Not a good kick. Colorado State should get good field position, good roll. Boy, they got a break there. That ball hit at about the 35-yard line, rolled another 15 yards. Colorado State will begin first and 10 from their own 45. And Big 12 football will continue after these local messages. June Henley and the number 20 ranked Kansas Jayhawks will visit Norman, Oklahoma to take on the Oklahoma Sooners. Henley's 194 yard a game average and record setting ability to find the end zone have definitely vaulted this Jayhawk into Heisman contention. Join us at 1130 a.m. Central Time next Saturday on most of these same stations along the Big 12 Network. And let's take a look at the Big 12 rushing leaders. Byron Hanspard, we had him early on in the season. He is a dandy, averaging over 200 yards a carry. We'll see Henley next week. And Demond Parker from Oklahoma, 143.5 yards a carry. Once again, Big 12 having some of the premier runners in college football. Colorado State trailing 14-0. They have it first and 10. Washington with a little bit of running room in Nebraska territory. He is hit. The penalty flag will be thrown, and that is a good call. Eric Warfield, I think, is going to be called for the infraction. The junior from Texarkana, Arkansas. Jamel Williams is chasing him out of bounds. Also came on that play. Those are mistakes you don't want to have. No, and you just have to be aware of where you are on the football field. Dead ball. Postal foul. Just a defense. Hit out of bounds. There's, a, there's a, a white five yards in width. is this big white mark on the, on the sideline. A little counter play. Colorado State's offensive lineman get out in front. Once you get into this into this white area, let it go. You know, kind of let it go. I don't know. It's kind of it's it's touchy though. I mean, you, you're you're sprinting full speed. It's hard to it's hard to stop on a dime like that. Warfield just playing aggressively. It's kind of a borderline shot. Well, now Colorado State with some pretty good field position. Ball on the 32, first and 10, 336 left in the first half. Moreno looking deep. Has a man who's tripped up. No touchdown, Colorado State. Ronald Antoine was fighting between two Nebraska defenders. No, I take it back. It's Jeff Turner. Somehow he came up with that. Dave, he was in a major crowd. He was, but Moreno knew exactly where he was going to be. And the reason that he was able to throw the football so accurately, tremendous protection up front by his offensive line. 
There was five yards of separation between any Nebraska defender and Moreno. Perfect vision down the field and threw an accurate dart. Boy, that was impressive. Turner, the transfer from Iowa State. Coaches felt they've got a lot more than they expected from this young man. They blocked it. The extra point is blocked. Two block kicks, one field goal, one extra point by Nebraska. And that time he kicked it so low it hit one of his offensive linemen in the butt, I think. <laughs> I don't think it got off the ground. Well, we're going to give it to Grant Wistrom just because we like his hair. Man. <laughs> lack of it. I'll tell you. you well, McDougal not getting much air underneath it. No. Jeff Turner, a wonderful story to transfer. Well, Moreno is now 5 of 10. Moreno is for 91 yards and a touchdown. Let's take a look at Turner. He's on the outside. He's number one on the outside. All he does is run a little post pattern down the middle of the football field. Just great concentration on the ball. And effort is made to, to deflect it, to knock it away by Booker. And he's a great cover guy, but Moreno knew he threw an accurate pass. And he had confidence that his man, Turner, would make a play. And he beat Booker, the best cover guy Nebraska has to offer. Tenth touchdown pass for Moses Moreno. And boy, this extra point, was it low? Man, he just, he never got this ball off the turf at all hit somebody in the back of the helmet I think Man. now Moreno alternated a quarterback last year but at spring practice they gave him the ball then he gets this young man the Turner Jeff Turner whose fiance is battling leukemia it has been a difficult year for this young man but he has stood up to the challenge effectively he's a quality kid I'll tell Big you time. he's got his priorities straight and he knows what life's all about that's for sure and he certainly appreciates playing football 14 to 6 is our score. It's going to be Benning taking it about the five. Stutter steps looking for some room. Still on his feet. <laughs> Willie Taylor brings him down at the 33 yard line. And with 315 left in the first half, Nebraska leads 14 to 6. But thanks to the fumbled punt and great field position, Colorado State gets on the board. 32 yard pass to Turner. Took him only 21 seconds. Well, they were aided by that 15-yard unsportsmanlike personal foul on the on the sideline. You know, it was kind of it was it was iffy, it was questionable, but it certainly uh, helped the effort of Colorado State. But Moreno, what a great throw! Green around the right side. He has a convoy in front of him up to the 40-yard line. Knocked out of bounds at the 41. Now the fans wanted another late hit. Let's take a look at our Dr. Pepper roundup. Miami all over pit at halftime. Clemson by a couple of TDs over Wake Forest. That's in the second. Boston College trailing Navy at intermission. Purdue leading North Carolina State 28 to 6 also in quarter number two. And Northwestern trailing Indiana. South Carolina, Mississippi State tied at seven. And Michigan State 17 nothing leaders also in the second. Second down at three for Nebraska. Green spinning his way close to the 45 yard line. Be close to a first down. Kirk Bowman. The senior from Glendora, California, who missed all of last year because of a knee injury, having a very strong season at that left tackle spot. Well, Amon Green has already is already rushed for more yards than he had last week against Arizona State. Last week he had 87 yards on 20 carries. Already today he's got 97 yards on only 13 lugs. So he's certainly got a, a much more efficient day. Going Reset tonight. the clock. Reset the clock to 2:38. Well, they're giving instructions to the press box. We want to put on 19 seconds on the uh, reset the clock. There you go. 238. One thing this Colorado State defense hasn't done so far, David, and something that is something they haven't done the last couple of years, they don't give up the big play very often. Yeah, he's uh, that's true. I mean, they, they, they're taking some chances today, Ron. I mean, they got the safeties kind of nosy in the running game. They've only got seven in the box on initial alignment. They have the safeties kind of close to the line of scrimmage. And they, they're risking a big play today. Cross with a quick pitch this time to Green. Crosses the 50 into Ram territory. Amon Green has broken the century mark for the first time this year. 108 yards now on 15 carries. And I'll tell you, this, this is uh, going to be a little bit disturbing to, to defensive coordinator Larry Kerr because he wanted Frost to have to beat them in the option holding the football, not the pitch man Green. Second down and just about one. Oof. Hit right at the line of scrimmage, but lunging forward will be short of the first down. Hawkins again. He's a stud, Ron. I mean, this guy is could could be their best defensive lineman. He's got the potential to do that 
He's 6'2", 292 pounds. He's got the low center of gravity. He plays with leverage. He just has to get the motor out of neutral more, more than he does. Get it in overdrive. We have a timeout. We look at Hawkins. This is something that uh, Colorado State can't afford any injuries, however. They are thin there. Three defensive tackles, three defensive ends, and they knew that all those guys were probably going to play today because Nebraska just wears you down so much. You're right, Ron, and, and then you go to the linebacker level. You get you got guys that are, that are just kind of beaten up at that level with injuries, too, so they are thin up front. Now look at it this way. Next week they'll be in Hawaii. <laughs> they can take it easy before they head to Tulsa as we take a look at Nations Bank schedule. Proud sponsor of the Nations Bank schedule. Wind up with Wyoming on November the 16th. And Nebraska at Kansas State. Well, that's a big one. Boy, then they come right back. Baylor has really circled October 12th on their calendar. Then they have to go to Lubbock. They host Kansas. Oklahoma game usually at the end of November. Now at November 2nd because the big battle, of course, on the 29th. Nebraska and Colorado right here in Lincoln. You know, Ron, one thing Nebraska's doing is controlling the tempo of the game. They've run 42 plays now to Colorado State's 20 snaps, so they have a 2-1 to one margin there. Nebraska very content to just keep it on the ground. On third down and one, they get it as they move up to the 40-yard line. Green is getting the workhorse load. We weren't sure how much he was going to be alternating with Damon Benning early on. They felt, the coaches felt that maybe Green had been playing up to what he should have been playing well, the first couple games. Yeah, one thing they wanted him to do was run hard. He's been running hard before he's showing a little more acceleration today, a little more burst. Ross looking for the tight end oh. down the middle. Instead, he goes short, complete to Brendan Holby. Holby, the former walk on. Comes up with another reception. First down, Cornhuskers all the way down to about the 22-yard line. Well, pretty good idea. You know, uh, Colorado State, they've got those safeties hammering up in there as extra linebackers against the run. Just run a little play action, throw the football behind them a little bit. You, you get a matchup with a wide receiver on a, on a linebacker. That's a tough matchup. Ross again, a pitch inside to Green. He's down to the 10, down to the 8-yard line. A little shovel pass. I don't think people realize how difficult that play is to run. And it's a safe play, Ron, because if it's not executed, it's an incompletion. It's a, it's a forward pass. It's a shovel pass. This is not a fumble if Amon Green does not handle the ball. The lineman pulls out in front a little shovel pass. He escorts him down the field very, very well. Amon Green takes advantage of some nice blocking up front by the big horse, Chris Dishman. Cross keeps it down to the five, fumbles it out of bounds, but it'll be Nebraska's ball with 101 left to play in the first half. Kwame and Taylor running Frost out of bounds. And they'll move the ball back to the point of where he fumbled it. You can't fumble it forward. They'll move it back to where he lost control of the football. This Nebraska used to be a straight eye formation. Since the 80s, they moved to that I formation, that option I. And since that time in the 80s, they finished 1, 2, 3 in NCAA in offense. And Tom Osborne just kind of went with the times, both offensively and defensively in switching schemes. Well, he certainly did. And they're so sophisticated in their running game, Ron. They run one back set, two back set. They run the option. They run the power game. They run misdirection stuff. When you're a linebacker, you're mentally and physically challenged playing Nebraska because they show so many different looks to run the same type of play. They really keep you off balance. We got a timeout with 101 left. Nebraska leading 14 to 6 and probably a little bit closer first half as Colorado State was as much as a 38 point underdog in this ball game. But they are not rushing the football the way they had anticipated for Colorado State. Now look at that number. 192 yards for Nebraska, 25 for Colorado State. And you know, we mentioned the way for Nebraska to get back on track is to start running the ball like they did when they won the net rushing title four out of the last five years and shut down the opposition running the ball, make them one dimensional. They they are certainly getting that done here this afternoon. Nebraska approaching 200 yards on the ground. Colorado State only a quarter of a century mark. That's an unbelievable mismatch there. Of course, last week against Arizona State, about 130 yards running the football. Much more success today. Well, they want to do, uh, do what Nebraska does best. You know, that's just come off the football, pound some people, sustain some blocks, get those big 300-pound offensive linemen pushing and pressing, and get those talented eye backs behind them and see what they could get done. And they're, they're doing a good job of it this afternoon. 
Second down and goal. Ball on the four-yard line for Nebraska. High formation. Benning from the tailback spot. Frost is going to keep it. Dives for the end zone. Touchdown. That's what Colorado State defensively wanted to have happen. They wanted Frost to beat them running the option and not the pitch man. Well, that time Frost burned him. They took away his pitch right away. Frost turned it up the football field for a touchdown. He's thrown for one. And now he rushes for one. 56 seconds left in the half. Colorado State put six on the board, but Nebraska answers. Chris Brown on to attempt the extra point. Brown is perfect this afternoon, and with 56 seconds left to play in the first half, Nebraska has opened up a 21-6 margin over Colorado State. Nine plays, 67 yards on the drive. Nebraska averaging almost six yards every time they touch the football. Yeah, they're really getting it done. Uh, haven't taken advantage of every opportunity, but they certainly took advantage of this one. The offensive line, look at them reestablish the line of scrimmage backwards. Full back once again with the key block. Say that was detonation out there on the perimeter. Done very well by Schuster. And Frost just snuggled up, codes to him, and just took it up inside his block to the end zone. A 107th year of football here in Nebraska. They are looking for their 700th win today. And Joe Paterno is trying to do the same at Penn State, trying to get Penn State's 700th win. Yep, and they're trying to join the ranks of uh, some teams that have gotten it done, Michigan, Texas, Alabama. I tell you, that's, uh, that's pretty darn good company. Notre Dame. I think what I like is the fact that Bob Devaney, the former coach prior to Tom Osborne, and Tom Osborne had 333 of the 699 wins. That's you know what's amazing, Ron, is you think of all the all the numbers that Tom Osborne's run up here, the two that stand out to me at home here over the last nine years, they're 52 and two. Since 1980, they're 96 and nine here at Lincoln. Those are mind boggling. They've won 31 straight here at home. That's incredible. He's never lost more than three games a year. Washington at about the two. Heads to his left, going to be wrapped up at the 15-yard line, a return of 13 on the play. Take a look at what uh, Coach Tom Osborne's done here. Look at some of these numbers are just that's, that's impressive. outstanding. You know, 23 nine-win seasons. Most programs, would they celebrate when they get a nine-win <laughs> season. He's down at 23 years. Look at that record, 82.5%. And the winning percentage 12 big eight championships that's getting it done i mean that's just you know you, you get to a certain level there's no seat at the ladder top of the ladder of success right. to maintain it everybody's taking a shot at you it's their bowl game every week and you're still sustaining it been in nebraska since 1962 moreno's going to call a timeout as the running play got absolutely nothing and at the line by number 97 jeff Ogre. Tom Osborne, four-year starter at Hastings College in Nebraska. Played three years in the NFL, believe it or not. A couple at Washington, one year at San Francisco. And, and you know, when he speaks of the quarterback position, he knows of what he says. He was a quarterback. So he knows what Scott Frost's going through, trying to make the mental and physical adjustment to playing at, the, at this level of competition in a, in a, in a system that's fairly complex. And, Relies on the quarterback making decisions, you know, quite a bit. So he, he, he understands it. One thing that Coach Osborne is, is patient. Very much. I mean, he's loyal. This whole program, it, it just it just oozes loyalty. I mean, he's been here forever. A lot of his, deep, his uh, assistants have been here 20 years or more. You get that continuity, and that's part of the reason this team has been, this program has been so successful for years and years and years, is you have that continuity. The recruits understand that the coach and his staff are going to be here all four of their years, and that really helps you. Tom has been part of Nebraska since 62. 11 years in his, as an assistant, took over in 73. Second down and 11. 47 seconds left in the half. Colorado State with a football trailing by 15. They're going to keep it on the ground. Crossing the 20-yard line, it is Damon Washington. You know, there's a guy uh, that just came up into the broadcast booth that played with the Cincinnati Bengals. He was in Super Bowl 23 in 1988 against the 49ers and is one of Charlie McBride's favorites. Defensive end Jim Scow goes into the Hall of Fame 
here at, at Nebraska. And uh, I'll tell you, this is a guy. Is that the that, guy you were trashing at supper last night? Yeah, it wasn't right. worth anything? <laughs> this, this guy understood the game of football better than anybody. He got under your pads, tremendous body strength. He was a great player. We talked about uh, how consistent this program is. This blew me away when we were looking at the notes earlier this week. Look how long these assistants have been. Charlie McBride telling us, I, I've stayed here because of my family. I'm, yeah. I'm working with a great football coach. It's a wonderful city. And Milt Tenniper, the offensive line coach, 23 years. He has had numerous All-Americans, Outland Trophy winners, Lombardi Trophy winners. That's it, impressive. It is, you know, and, the, and it sounds cornball to people, you know, that you talk about family atmosphere and, and uh, love and loyalty and all that, but that that's it's the real deal here at Nebraska. I mean, it, you can just feel it everywhere. And Charlie McBride, he starts talking about some of his players when you talk to him, and he gets watery-eyed. I mean, you know, he really, it's like, it's like his, his extension of sons everywhere. He's really into it. He says it is a family on defense. They call him the black shirts. Well, Moreno's going to try to put it up. Throws a very dangerous pass, but the only one close to that was Sonny Lubick, his coach. Intended for Jeff Turner. Eric Stokes was on the coverage. And Marino shaking that uh, Moreno, I should say. He wears number 13, and he, and he kind of throws the ball like Dan Marino, but his name's Moreno, and he's shaking that right hand a little bit. Looked like he hit a helmet on his follow-through, and that uh, that's an injury that quarterbacks hate, boy, when they hit that passing hand on somebody's dome. Mike Fullman set to receive the kick. Fullman already has a touchdown on her punt return this year. Yeah, he blew one uh, up at Michigan State. He just blew him away. He got got to the got to the uh, the wall, and it was all over with. His longest is 62 yards. McDougal set to kick. He's at a 40 and a 47 yarder. Pressure's on. Line drive. Fullman should be able to return this. Goes right up the middle. And he slipped to the turf, and exactly. in college football, you're down when your knee hits. And he hit it at the 40, a 30-yard punt, only a nine-yard return. But Nebraska still has 24 seconds left, and that's enough time to light the old fuse on some fireworks. We talked, Dave, at the beginning of the game that Scott Frost had a great deal of pressure. Coaches wanted a nice first quarter from him, a safe one, just to take some of the pressure off from the media and the fans. And I think he's done just that. Yeah, good numbers throwing the football, 8 of 11. They've kept it simple, giving them an opportunity to complete some passes, 71 yards. He's thrown a touchdown pass, run the ball well, good decisions in the option. He's got a touchdown rushing, so he's coming along. Safety valve pass off to the side. Green down to the 30-yard line before he steps out of bounds. Pick up of 10 on the play. Tetris Nunn, the true freshman from Colorado Springs on the coverage. You know, the, the thing that amazes me when I watch guys like Amon Green run is how still their head is. I mean, everything on their lower body is going crazy and giving you the, the loose leg and the swivel hips and everything, but you could put an egg on their helmet it wouldn't roll off. They run so fluidly. All the great running backs do that, and he certainly is one of them. Nebraska has a timeout left. Let's see if they try to get a little bit closer, call the timeout, and kick the field goal. Green to Frost, right. He's going to keep it himself. Quarterback draw, big hole up the middle, and a lot of room to run. Down to the 10 yard line. Nine seconds showing on the clock. That was a great read by Scott Frost. Well, this is this is a quarterback draw, as you call it, Ron, but it's a counteraction up front by the offensive line. They do a nice job of confusing Colorado State up front. Watch the left guard and left tackle pull, just like the old counter tray. It's out of the shotgun. Direct snap to Frost. The guard kicks out. Tackle true turns it upfield, and he's got green pastures ahead of him. Now Frost is nimble-footed, plus he's got a strong body. This is a guy that won the shot put championship when he was a senior in high school. He won the state championship, and the runner-up was his right tackle, Eric Anderson. Here's a kid that put the shot 59 feet, and he's playing quarterback at Nebraska. He's a He's a very unique athlete. Well, interesting as you look at Scott Frost rushing numbers, nine carries, 52 yards. I don't think they're going to kick the field goal. I think they want the whole enchilada here. Yeah, they want to go for the gusto. Let me get a couple more of those in, can't we? Yeah. <laughs> go for it all? Yeah. Well, Sonny Lubick was afraid this might happen. He got down 14 to 6, and things were looking pretty good. I think uh, Tom Osborne feels comfortable with his place kicker. I think he wants to give his offense as many opportunities to get on track as he possibly can. He has, he has confidence that his defense will keep Nebraska in the game if they don't execute on these plays. He wants the offense to get something done. Ross, three-step drop, looks into the flat, goes for the money, doesn't get it. 
Plus, you had nine seconds, and you can still come out and kick. Right. And that's exactly what Tom Osborne's going to do. John Vedrill, the intended receiver, thought he had at least a, two more plays left in that nine seconds. Well, what do you want to He wanted to run a fade here. And his receiver tries to get that done, runs the fade up to the corner. The drow and the ball is just overthrown. You want to throw that to the outside shoulder instead of the inside shoulder. You don't want to give the defensive back any opportunity to make a play on the ball. Throw it to the outside shoulder out of bounds. Chris Brown, two for two this year coming into the game. This is a 27-yard attempt. Good snap, good hold, and a good kick. Final play of the first half is a 27-yard field goal by sophomore Chris Brown from South Lake, Texas. The Huskers will head to the locker room with a 24-6 lead, tacking on 17 points in quarter number two. I think you'd have to give their offense uh, pretty good grades, Dave, in that first 30 minutes of play. They did exactly what they needed to do. Yeah, the only uh, the only miscue was the fourth down pass attempt. Scott Frost had his big tight end, Sheldon Jackson, wide open, threw the ball behind him. That would have been a touchdown. If they put that touchdown on the board, 31-6, it would have been probably a perfect offensive first half. Let's go down to Brian Nooner. Well, Coach, uh, Colorado State crept back in it, but then you close out the half with two nice drives, mixing the run and the pass. Yeah, the last four or five minutes were important to us because they were certainly back in the game at 14-7, and they've got a great offensive team. I think our defense has played well to hold them to six points. Points. And we moved the ball some, so we're, we're doing a little better. Yeah, coming into this game, they're averaging 39 points a game. Like you mentioned, holding a six. You've got your running game on track, it appears. Yeah, we're running pretty well. We're playing a little better offensively. All right, good luck second half, Coach. Brian, let's send it back up to you. Thank you, Brian. Nebraska averaging six yards per play. More importantly, they lead at halftime 24 to six. More halftime activities coming your way from Lincoln, Nebraska, right after this. Staff has been brought to you by Sonic Drive-In, where we invite you to drive in for a change. And by Sitco, look for the sign of quality throughout Big 12 country. Sitco says go. And by Southwestern Bell. Count on Southwestern Bell for the communication services you'll use every day. Yes, it's that simple. Twenty-four to six, our score. Colorado State trailing by eighteen. Let's see what Sonny Lubick has to say. He is with Brian Nooner. Coach, uh, we talked last night that the key to this game might be the first five minutes, but it turns out it was the final five minutes of this first half that was the key. Uh, yeah, we weren't very smart there in the last two minutes, really. Which, you know, now we miss a field goal, miss an extra point, and. Uh, the game should be closer than what it really is. You've proven on that scoring drive. You can move the ball against this defense. I think we can move it. Again, we got to give our quarterback an extra second to throw the football, and if we can do that, uh, we'll catch the football, but uh, we've got to be able to do that. All right, thanks a lot for joining us, Coach. Sonny Lubick of Colorado State. And we are underway. They're going to run it out. Calvin Branch does not get up to the 20. Not a very smart move when you're down by that many. Let's take a look at the Discover Card halftime stats brought to you by Discover Card, proud partners of the Smithsonian's 150th anniversary. And the numbers really all Nebraska, and I think one of the keys, though, is the rushing yards. Colorado State wanted to run the football. Not successful. Not successful. Nebraska wanted to run it, and they certainly did. Over two football fields rushing. And look at the time at uh, possession differential there. And also, Nebraska's run so many more snaps at the line of scrimmage than Colorado State. Colorado State once again, lone setback. Moreno is going to do what he did in the first quarter, put the ball up and is incomplete. Intended for Jeff Turner, the wide receiver, who already has a touchdown. Moreno in that first half, 5 for 12. 91 yards. Not a, not a bad performance. I'm sure he'd like to have done a little bit more. I, I think one of the keys in that first half was Moreno and his offensive troops answered Nebraska's touchdown drive to start the game. Had to settle for a field goal opportunity and was blocked. That had to hurt your mentality a little bit. Moreno now has a touchdown pass in every game this year. Throws into the flat. He has Turner at the 30. Gets away from the defender. Picks up about seven more after the reception. Up to the 39-yard line. That'll be a first down for Colorado State. Michael Booker, who has been having some problems with tendonitis on the coverage. 
Oh, Booker was MVP in the Fiesta Bowl. He had an outstanding game in the Fiesta Bowl, the national championship game. And in Moreno, like you said, Ron, at the touchdown pass in every game. Coming into today, he'd thrown for at least 250 yards passing in every game. He's going to have to pick it up a little bit this afternoon to get that done. First and 10, ball on the 39-yard line. It's time to try it on the ground to Damon Washington. Damon's brother, Riley, was an All-American trackster here at Nebraska. He is second in the whack and rushing the football, 20th in the nation. Uh, one thing that Nebraska is uh, doing up, up front defensively is Colorado State's not reestablishing the line of scrimmage down the football field. Nebraska's getting stalemates or pushing Colorado State backwards a little bit. They have dominated the line of scrimmage, both offensively and defensively for the most part. No gate on the play, second and ten. Two wide receivers to the right. One to the left, lone setback. Moreno, three-step drop. Quick slant. Oh. It's intercepted at the 40. A lot of room to run down to the 20, down to the 15-yard line. Jamel Williams with his first interception of the year. Well, Eli Workman couldn't make the catch. The ball bounce off, bounces off of his hands, and then it's down the football field. That's the first interception of the season for Jamal Williams. I tell you, he's a great, he's a great player, though. I mean, he can get some things done. Only the fourth interception of the year for Moreno, but you really can't give that to Moreno. No, it's, it's, it's his tight end. His big tight end, Eli Workman, has to, has to make a play on this. And he can't control it. And then it's off to the races. And I'll tell you what, that's a, that's a quality athlete right there. Now, that's a linebacker that's running like a tailback. Now this young defense of Colorado State has got to stand tall, or this could be a blowout early. Green will try the left side, spinning around, makes his way up to the 10-yard line. Octavius McFarlane on the stop. You know, Moreno has thrown four interceptions. Three of them now have been tipped. Two at the line of scrimmage, and this last one not controlled by his tight end. That's a very catchable football. Bounces off his hand, hits him in the face mask, and then deflects to the defensive player, Jamel Williams, who says, thank you very much. Pickup of three on the play, second and seven. Frost looking in the flat, has his man to the five, steps out of bounds at the four-yard line. Sean Whiting, a wingback, number 33, not even on the depth chart, makes the reception. And if Frost could have hit him maybe a little bit sooner, or if Whiting could have kept his feet maybe just a little bit better, keep himself in bounds, he would have scored a touchdown. But he just couldn't get his feet back underneath him to right him, himself and get himself back up the football field. If he can control his feet, he walks into the corner of the end zone. Third down and a yard. The pitch to Green tries to get the first down. Is hit behind the line of scrimmage. We have a penalty and maybe a face mask. Yep. Todd Selecki comes from that right tackle spot, the junior from Durango, Colorado. And Amon Green takes his helmet off. He says, man. That was, a, that was a vicious one there. <laughs> About took his neck off. Yeah. That's what happens. Anytime you tackle high, you run a chance of having that happen. And, you, you know, that, that's not how coaches teach you to tackle. They don't teach you to hit high and hog tie people. They teach you to get your head across the bow, try to knock the football out of there, and, and wrap people up. And uh, that's, uh, that's, that's, <laughs> that's not, one way to get them down. That's not form tackling right there by Selecki. And that, that's how you can, the reason that those penalties are called, you can sustain serious neck injuries that way. There's no question about that. I think after he brought him down with a face mask, he reached up again. Pass, five yards on the defense. The penalty goes half the distance. It'll be a first down. Well, Nebraska now first down and goal ball sitting at the two-yard line. And when you have a lineman averaging over 300 pounds, this is a great situation to be in. Oh, there's no question about it. And, uh, this was something that one of the musts for Colorado State was no margin for error. Well, they put themselves in a serious error situation here by that deflected interception. Green is the tailback. Frost changing the play at the line. Two-step into the flat. Touchdown, Nebraska. Sheldon Jackson on the reception. Second touchdown pass of the afternoon for Scott Frost. And he put some uh, velocity on this one. He's definitely got arm strength. His accuracy is the thing that's uh, eluded him 
on a, on a real consistent basis. But he can get the football there. I mean, he can throw from the opposite hash mark and throw a sideline pattern, a frozen rope, and, and get it there in a heartbeat. Chris Brown to attempt the extra point. Snaps a little high, but they get it down, and the kick is good. Brown remains perfect on the afternoon, and it didn't take Nebraska long. The interception in just over two minutes. They've got a couple more on the board. They lead at 31-6. Nebraska has not lost back-to-back -back games since 1976. It happened only once in the Tom Osborne era, and it doesn't look like it's going to happen today. 31-6, they lead it. Brown set to kick off. Once again, a good, deep kick by Brown. Chris Brown, the sophomore from South Lake, Texas, used to have some pretty good locks. Said some of the defensive players held him down a few weeks ago, shaved his head. Now he says, told us yesterday, I'm going to keep it like this. It's my new image. That's right. He shaves it before every game, I think. That's what he said. There you see the Nebraska scoring drive. Four plays, 13 yards, 62 seconds. Scott Frost likes uh, his tight ends by the name of Jackson. He's thrown to both of them. Different numbers, but the same last name. Jackson and Jackson, it's a, it's a law firm here in Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> it might be. Well, now the crowd's sensing the kill. Is showing seven on the line of scrimmage. Moreno, a couple of tight ends, he keeps it on the ground. Heading to the outside is Damon Washington. He is wrapped up at about the 25 yard line. Pick up a five on the play. Jamel Williams in on the stop. Jamel Williams, coaches were telling us how he was born with loose joints, they called it. I hate when that happens. Oh, I tell you. Played I back in high school, said he was an amazing runner. Oh, yeah, he was uh, uh, just a, a, a slasher. I mean, a pounder at that at that eye back. And, and he's he's a nasty, nasty defensive player. He can just fly to the football. and He does it every snap at 17 tackles against Arizona State last week. Second and four. Joey Porter in motion. They keep it on the ground. Close to the first down be about a yard short. You know, it's interesting, Nebraska now sensing, uh, getting a pretty good idea of, of what Colorado State's doing by formation a little bit. And that time, Farley lined up from the outside linebacker position and, and, and bounced around the inside. Watch him moving his way into the eight gap between the guard and the center to blitz on the run and get involved in the tackle. I mean, he lined up on the extreme outside and moved to the inside in the gap. On third and one. The pitch back to Washington, and he is going to be run out of bounds well short of the first down. Farley's getting involved. He's been in, involved now in back-to-back -back plays and getting juiced up a little bit out there. The crowd's getting into it. His teammates are getting into it, and he is flying. Watch him, watch him inside-out pursuit. Here's a guy that can run. He, takes, he runs the tailback down from behind. That's speed right there, folks. He plays the game fast, doesn't he? He really does. Absolutely. He was the guy that Dave Lay, the offensive coordinator, Colorado State feared the most. For good reason. McDougal set the kick. The rush is coming. He hits a line drive. Take it and dropped in a penalty immediately. 37-yard kick. Fullman had no place to go on the return, but there is a penalty flag thrown right at the point of contact. Is that another face mask penalty? How could you face mask a guy when he's right in front of you like that? I don't know what the what the call is here. I don't know what. Uh, Maybe he didn't give him enough room. Well, he didn't he didn't signal fair catch. I know that. I didn't see that. Interference with the yeah, opportunity didn't to give him enough to make room. a fair catch. Boy, it looked like it's the kicking team in the five yard belt. First down. You have to give him five yards, and I guess it wasn't quite five yards, but Olsen a little bit surprised. He looked at the official shaking his head like, boy, I thought he had room to catch that football, and but he was flagged. Nebraska leads 31-6. Look at it again. Now, remember, you have to give him a five-yard buffer. And it, it definitely didn't give him a five-yard buffer. He didn't really impede his vision or anything, but he was well within five-yard area, that's for sure. Frost looks for the pass straight down the middle, has a man, and is complete to John Vedrill. And he went right after Olsen. Olsen had the penalty called on him. He went down the middle of the football field. Olsen never turned around to find the ball. 
Vedral did, and he was rewarded with the reception completion. Vedral, the former walk-on, his brother Mike played tight end for Nebraska. Scott Frost has plenty of arm strength. I mean, that's never a question that anybody has had. I, I, the rumors are that he can throw the ball 80 yards in the air. I mean, he was a shot put champion in high school. But as you can see, Olsen never found the ball. He was concentrating too much on the receiver, never found the ball, and the receiver made the adjustment. 37 yards on the carry, and Green up to the 15-yard line. One thing Frost said, which I think impressed a lot of people, he said, it's not just up to me to replace Tommy Frazier, but the whole team's got to step up. And I think that was a pretty good point. A lot of people put so much emphasis on the quarterback, but he needed help from everyone. Oh, you're absolutely right. Uh, there's no doubt Tommy Frazier uh, set a standard that is almost impossible to duplicate, but he had a pretty good supporting cast. The offensive line last year might have been one of the best in the history of this program. On second and five, first man through, Ooh. nothing but Paydirt. Brian Schuster from the fullback position scores his first touchdown of 1996. And that's what I was talking about earlier when I said if you're a linebacker for a defensive football team playing against Nebraska, you have to be on your toes at all time. And uh, Scott Frost reverse pivots out of there, but he'd already given the football to his fullback. It was kind of a backdoor play. He looked like he was going to option down the line of scrimmage to the left. Schuster was already in the end zone before Colorado State could react. Great execution. That was classic Nebraska, wasn't it? Oh, big time. Brown to attempt the extra point. Uh oh Snap is fumbled. They're going to go down with it. Well, John Vedrill just couldn't get the ball down after the snap from Adam True. And the extra point is no good, but with 11.06 left to play, in the third quarter, the Huskers are opening it up here in Lincoln. They lead 37 to 6. <laughs> Nebraska now with over 200 more yards than Colorado State, and they have 31 more points. 37 to 6 is our score with 11.06 left to play in the third quarter. Chris Brown set to kick it away. Colorado State 0-5 against Nebraska here in Lincoln. The last meeting was back in 1993. They lost that game 48-13. This Colorado State team, three of their first five games this year have been against ranked opponents. Brown really showing some leg strength. That'd have been a field goal. Man. That's Not hard to bad. do. That is tough to do. <laughs> he likes it. Colorado State takes over first and 10 on the 20. Let's take a look at that last touchdown by the Huskers. Yeah, this linebacker gets blocked, but watch what happens to Taylor. As the linemen pull, watch him chase it. He thinks he's going to defend the option down the line of scrimmage, and they backdoor him. Schuster has green pastures. Nobody. He would have scored in one finger touch. <laughs> Unbelievable. Keep the football, young man. Let's see if Moreno can try to do something on the board. Being pressured, gets it out of the flat. Pickup of only two on the play on the completion to Justin Scholl. Jamel Williams just wrestling the big tight end out of bounds. Well, Jamel Williams has been probably the most consistent defensive performer. 13 tackles in game one against Michigan State, 17 last week, six tackles for losses, three quarterback sacks. Now he's got his first interception of the year earlier in this half. This guy's a football player all the way. Bad for a guy who last year had both knees reconstructed. Not too bad. A lot of movement. Penalty flags are down. Washington on the carry up to the 30-yard line, close to the first down before being dropped by Warfield and Octavius McFarland. And Wistrom, I think, as uh, Tomich jumped, Wistrom was a little bit antsy, too. I mean, those defensive ends are listening to the quarterback too much. Look at the football. Get that peripheral vision into the ball and move when it moves. Two completely different guys, Wistrom and Thomas. They are excellent football players, personality-wise, 180 degrees. Look at them both. Eh, jumping, jumpy in that in that neutral zone. That's a no-go. It's gonna. That's a free five-yard penalty right there. And and really, they've gotten them more than once. I mean, now they're penalizing Colorado State. Offside on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Oh, they're just going back to walk it out. Panic there for a second, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to take the play instead of the game. They'll take the penalty and, and keep it second down. So now it's second and short. 
Colorado State to try to convert. Moreno over on the sideline talking to Lubick. He is back out, handing the play over to the rest of the troops. I really like this kid, though. The, oh, the, one, the one thing Moreno's going to do is slide in the pocket and throw between people, find lanes to throw between, because he's had a couple of passes tipped for interception. Second and three. Right up the middle, up to the 29-yard line, it is Calvin Branch, a senior from Spring, Texas. I tell you, he had uh, Tomich, uh, Tomich uh, flinch it again. Moreno has got him on a string. They've got to block the quarterback out. Third downs, Colorado State has not converted on third down all afternoon. They're 0 for 6. Nebraska on the flip side of it, 7 for 11. So that's a huge factor in this football game. And part of the reason is they haven't converted is they've been third and one. This third and one, Colorado State should be able to convert to keep this drive alive. Incredibly loud here at Memorial Stadium. They'll get the first down, but not by a whole lot. Now this offensive line has really been hurt. They've had to rebuild the offensive line for Colorado State. They lost Adam Wallace, a tackle with a leg fracture versus Oregon on the fourth play, fourth play of that game. But this time they had a pretty good surge. And watch Mike Newell. He's the guy. It's kind of a, it's a quarterback sneak, and they wedge right right up behind him. He just kind of covers this guy up. Not a quarterback sneak, I, I, I should say, just a straight dive by the fullback by Washington. He covers his man up. Nice block. A little too much time. We got an illegal, illegal substitution against the white. Well, they were trying to get off the field. Jeff Turner ran out. And it looked like they were trying to get Jeremy Calhoun off the field before anything happened. And they didn't get him off soon enough. Dead ball. Illegal substitution against the offense. Still first down. Now Calhoun comes back in. Ronald Antoine comes out. Well, yeah, the substitution was was a little bit late. You can't substitute that late to outside of the hash mark because the defense doesn't have an opportunity to adjust personnel. Jeff Turner wide to the left. Moreno, a little play action. Looking for Turner, a little bit short on the play. And Moreno took a shot. Second down. And that's one thing that this young kid is, is tough in the pocket. He stands tall in the pocket. He doesn't shy away from contact. I tell you, he, uh, he really has a nice uh, nice throwing arm. He, he really really is a good leader of this football team. A little play action fake, trying to freeze the linebackers a little bit. Boy, take, I tell you, that was close. He takes a little push from behind from Mr. Thomas. I'm surprised that wasn't a penalty. Second and 15. To Washington. Maybe up to the 30 yard line. Pick up of about three on the play. Set up a third and 12 situation. And once again, Colorado State running the counter gap is what they call it. Everybody's got a little bit different terminology, but they pull the backside lineman. The guard kicks out and the tackle pulls around the horn. This was made popular initially by the Washington Redskins with their hogs and John Riggins running the ball in that one back set. You'd have Russ Grimm and Joe Jacoby coming around the corner and John Riggins running the ball. That was a massive humanity there. Third down and 12. Eight minutes left to play in the third. Moreno's being rushed. Steps up in the pocket. Loses the football and is going to be dropped. Jason Wilds coming in from that left tackle position. The sophomore from New Orleans, Louisiana. Oh, that's also there. The initial disruption was by Jamel Williams. He's the one that, that that disrupted the pocket and made Moreno step up and try to make something happen. Then his teammates all got involved in the action, but Jamel Williams came on a blitz. Let's take a look at it. Number 28 at the bottom of the screen. He defeats the running back on the blitz pickup, makes him step up in the pocket, and then all heck breaks loose from Moreno, and it's all over with. Williams having a great game today. McDougal's kick, end over end. Pullman taking it about the 37-yard line and makes his way up to about the 44. And with 7.07 left in the third quarter, Nebraska leads at 37-6. to 
Let's go to Brian Nooner on the sideline. Brian? Thank you, Ron. You know, you saw the Nebraska black shirt defense at its finest on that last uh, sequence. And you may be wondering, why do they call the black shirts? Well, it goes back to the mid-1960s when defensive coordinator uh, George Kelly was here, and he had the first team defensive unit of Nebraska wear black practice jerseys. That's simply how it started. Now, Tom Osborne told me that when Monty Kiffin came on board uh, in the late 60s, he really exploited this idea. He got everyone involved and made it a pride factor. And as you can see by the uh, young man that's sitting next to me, even the fans were involved. They all got the black shirts. Everybody's involved and really gets the crowd going. Well, the defense is doing the job, and so is Amon Green. The big run for Green. Well, a key for Colorado State was tackling. And Amon Green, a little counteraction. His linemen get the blocks up the football field, the missed tackle by Olsen, and then it's off to the races. Olsen has to make that play, and as a result of him not making the tackle, Green gets an extra 30 yards. He's now got 162 yards rushing. Frost looking for the quick hitch. Got it complete to Brendan Holbein. Down to the five-yard line. Pick up a 15 on the play. Once again, this Colorado State defense ranked 110th in the NCAA. Yeah, they're starting to, you, you called it early in the game, Ron. They, they're on the field for so many plays, they're starting to wear down. You know, you get a little bit of a break at halftime, you think you might be able to come back out and stand up to it, but Nebraska just wears on you and wears on you and wears on you. Just keeps pushing and leaning and pretty soon you, you, you crack. You see what Nebraska's done in the red zone today. This is their 59th play, 20 more than Colorado State has had. Frost has an opening, but he can't get in. They, we had a great angle of that. That opened up. It looked like he had nothing but golden goal post from about the five. It really did. Jones looked like he made a nice recovery there to, to prevent uh, a touchdown for Frost, his second rushing touchdown of the afternoon. Offensive line doing a good job up in front once again. And Schuster trying to lead him around the perimeter, but pretty good recovery back to the football by Jones. Inside of six minutes, the Huskers knocking on the door again. Frost with 56 yards running the football. He's already crossed the goal line once. Oh, touchdown, Nebraska. Amon Green taking it the final yard. That one was too easy. I mean, he just sliced off his left tackle. Just nothing fancy. Straight dive off tackle. He could have scored and touched football also. He said he was born to be a running back. His father, two older brothers, both have run the football. His stepfather was an offensive lineman. He said the stepdad put the toughness in him. Everybody else showed him how to run the football. That is his first touchdown, second touchdown rushing the football this season for Amon Green. And he has given the Huskers a 44-6 lead. Big 12 football will continue after these local messages. Nebraska has rushed for almost 300 yards in this football game. And they lead Colorado State 44-6. We're still in the third quarter. Chris Brown's kickoff is going to be returned, but not much. Washington with about a 20-yard return. There is Adam True. He snaps the long snaps for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. True, usually the left tackle, the 6'6 senior out of Lincoln. Oh, you need a good snap, good hold, good kick. Snap was tough, but the holder, Vedral, bailed out True. And then the kicker, Brown, executed. That's a nice job by Vedril averting catastrophe. The hold was low, uh, snap was low and inside. Vedril on the on the placement before, True had a very true snap, but Vedril couldn't handle it. So you can't take anything for granted. Good snap, good hold, good kick, and every extra point is a must. True's one of the guys I saw playing basketball. Thought he had some pretty good agility, could put on some weight, and now he's playing defense. Moreno's going to air it out long, intended for Turner, and it is incomplete penalty fly. Yeah, there was early contact. Uh, Brown got there before the arrival of the football. You have to allow the, the receiver to make an adjustment to make a play back on the ball, and Brown just ran into him. Turner, the transfer from Iowa State, sat out last year, but in 94, had over 540 yards kickoff returns, fourth highest in school history. Now, look at Brown's giving him a big cushion. 
Turner turns it up the football field. Brown fair. turning, he's turning he's turned his head, he's 15 making 15 a play 15. on the football, All but he just runs right through the receiver as Turner tries to make a play on the ball. You know, in the NFL, quite honestly, that's not pass interference as long as the defensive back right. has his head turned trying to make a play on the ball, but college football is a little different. Turner has three consecutive games, 100 yards receiving. He's closing in on that mark right now. You know, the other thing I like about a play like this in the NFL, that is all the way to where the infraction occurred. That's a huge pass interference, I think, is the biggest penalty right. in, the, in, in the big leagues. This is just a, a penalty from the line of scrimmage. It's much more tolerable. Nebraska showing six on the line of scrimmage. Moreno, straight drop. Looks down the side, complete. That was an excellent catch by Joey Porter. Porter looked like he had taken his eyes completely off Moreno. And they're going after uh, after the young corner, going after Brown a little bit, and, and just a tremendous effort by Moreno throwing the football. Gets Brown turned around. Nice move to the inside by Porter. The ball is, is there. I mean, it, it really, the ball's in the air before his receiver, Boy. Porter, makes the cut. That's a timing pattern that was executed very well. As soon as Porter turned around, the ball was hitting him in the gut. Yep. Jeff Turner wide to the right. Moreno again is being rushed. There's it out. Going for six, and it is intercepted. And then dropped. Are they calling it a touchback, They're though? Calling it a touchback. It was indeed an interception. Did he have possession? The officials are talking about it. Did he have control? They're trying to decide if it's just an incompletion or is it an interception. Ralph Brown coming down with the Oski. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> the, the potential Oski. Potential Oski. Now the officials, the hardest job they've got is keeping everybody away from them. Convention going on right here at the Zebras. Well, this is a good officiating crew that get together and talk about it. It was tough to see from our angle. And even on our replays, we understand it's very difficult to see. And, of course, pleading his case is, is the young man who could benefit, Mr. Ralph Brown. That would be his first of his collegiate career. Did he have control? That's we the question. Interception on the three-yard line. The momentum took him in. I don't think it was a question of whether he intercepted it. It's probably where they were going to put it. His momentum took him into the end zone. Exactly. He had he had total possession of the football. Now, were they going to call it a touchback at the 20-yard line is the, is the discrepancy. Where does he get control of the ball? He catches it at the four. Does he have control? No. Oh, boy. That's the question. Yes, he does. And the momentum takes him into the end zone. He lost the ball after he hit the ground. They mark it at, at the two-yard line. Instead of a touchback, they said that he got control of the football at the two-yard line. Nebraska takes over there. Well, we have a new quarterback, Matt Terman, the 5'11 senior from Wahoo, Nebraska, is coming to the lineup. A lot of people were calling for him last week. He did play against Arizona State. Let him on a nice drive. Ooh. Damon Benning upended at the six. Well, that's what happens when you go airborne. A guy like Nunn just takes your legs right out from under you. And then you have a one-point landing on, the, on your helmet or the back of your shoulder pads. But Benning wants to get his opportunity. I'm on Green's had a big day. Benning bounces it to the outside. And then he gets bounced. One-point landing, Mr. Nunn. Terminate on the year, four of six. One touchdown, no interceptions for 70 yards. Benning the eye back. Scott Frost obviously done for the day. Billy Legate, the sophomore from Elgin, Nebraska, on the carry. That is his first of the year. The 5'11 sophomore, 220 pounds. There is Scott Frost, and I think he's going to have a little bit of the pressure off. Turner Gill to our left, to Frost right. Turner Gill, former Nebraska quarterback, former professional baseball player. He was also a good one. Very efficient numbers for Scott Frost. 13 of 1,843 yards, two touchdowns. That's a decent day's work right there. And it was simple. The passing game was simple also. They kept it basic. Herman sees the seam, makes his way up to the 17-18 yard line before being brought down by Clark Hagens. Let's take a look at our Dr. Pepper score roundup. Dr. Pepper and your local bottler bring you this. Miami is all over Pitt still. Clemson leading Wake Forest by 11 in the third. Navy and Boston College not enough in the third. 
And Purdue wow. doubling up North Carolina State. Northwestern by 11 in the fourth over Indiana. Still a lot of time left. Mississippi State over South Carolina. That is also in the third. First and 10, ball on the 19th for the Huskers. Herman going deep. He has a man intended for Sheldon Jackson. Jackson split the defense right down the middle in the big 6'4 sophomore tight end from Diamond Bar, California. Couldn't come up with it. Well, there's a lot of substitutes. Uh, some, some second offensive linemen, backup offensive linemen in there doing a pretty good job for Terman, giving him protection. A little play action fake. He tries for the whole banana down the football field to Jackson. Just overthrows him, and Terman says, I have him. I have him. Oh, I don't have him. I just overthrew that bad boy just a little bit. Second and 10 for Nebraska. Leading 44 to 6. 3.30 left to play in the third quarter. They're going to keep it on the ground. Benning crosses the 30 up to the 31 yard line. Pick up of 12 on the play. Man, I'll tell you what, you talk about it. This is this is a flat, this is a whole stack of pancakes on this block from Matt. I hope I'm saying his last name right. I don't know how to say it to tell you. Watch 51 in the red. Boom. <laughs> Kwame drills. I mean, he just pancakes them and throws syrup on top of them. I mean, that was unbelievable. I, I need to buy a vowel from Vanna White. It's V-R-Z-A-L. <laughs> I guess it's Verzel. That's how you say it. But I'll tell you what, well, however you say his name, Mr. Verzel, that was a heck of a block. That is a heck of a defensive play right there for Colorado State. Clark Hagens, the redshirt freshman from Torrance, California, slashing in to make the stop. More scores ripping across the screen. Missouri, Iowa State. Missouri had a big win last week against Clemson. SMU's done well this year, but they trail BYU. And elsewhere in the WAC, Air Force over Rice in the second. You know, all the academies are playing well. Army, the Air Force, Navy, they were undefeated coming into this weekend collectively. Second down and 14. Upstairs incomplete. Verzel, that's how you pronounce it. Finally looked it up. Verzel. You're right. Yeah. You had yeah. it. I, I better have it because he'll come up and pancake me, man. Oh, without his helmet, he's got that goatee, that World Wrestling Federation look from Grand Island, Nebraska. I'll tell you what, that was that was an excellent block. That's that's a definite knockdown. That's a that's a waffle belly. That's not a pancake. That's a, that's a waffle belly when you knock him down and, and run up on his chest a little bit. He is also a big one. Third down and 14 for the Huskers. Play action pass. They throw it out into the flat. It is complete to the 30 yard Ooh. line. It'll be short of the first Man. down. Legate fights his way for a couple of more. Gee, that's, uh, you talk about breaking tackles. You can't tackle the Huskers high. They've got such unbelievable leg strength from working out in that weight room. They just drive and push, and Legate just ran right through it. Excellent effort. Take a look at Legate here. He's the fullback, number 40, works into the flat. The ball's delivered accurately. Watch him run right through this. High contact. You have to hit lower than that. That's much too high by none, and he just carries him. Legate, that was great leg strength. Push set to punt. He's averaging 53 yards a kick. Colorado State comes with everything, and the flags are down. That'll be a roughing the kicker car call, so Ronald Antoine might as well just sit down. State had the rush on, but Dave, they went at him instead of where the ball is going to be. Yeah, I think they uh, I think they got none for running into the kicker. Let's see if this is the 5 or the 15. That was a 58-yard kick, though, by Jesse Cush. Boy, so it obviously didn't bother his follow through Not that a much. Bit. Whew. That was a howitzer. I think they are going to call it a Tetris Nun. Yeah, none is the guy that ran into him. Let's see now. They're going to measure here because it's it's only the five-yard variety. So I guess they want to see if they have the first down or not. Let's listen in on the call. Referee held out. Running in against the defense. Five-yard penalty. 
the penalty makes it a first down. So that it is, even though it's only five instead of 15, it does give it enough for a first down conversion, and Nebraska maintains possession of the football. There's two different penalties, running into the kicker and roughing the kicker. This is the one where they called running into the kicker, and watch number 23 in the white. Definitely runs into him. Now, there, there's a, 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 he is being engaged by a blocker, and I think that was a factor in the call. But, boy, look at the leg extension. Follow through. Boy, that's dangerous. That's why they call it. You can break your foot, break your ankle, following through into a helmet like that. Nebraska takes over 222, left from the third. Benning, left side, cannot turn the corner, but he does stiff arm his way up to the 45-yard line before Myron Terry, a sophomore from Los Angeles, California, comes up with a stop. You know, there was another knockdown on that play by the fullback. And as I mentioned earlier, the offensive linemen, they, they, in, the, in the stat sheets, they keep track of pancakes for all the offensive linemen. Well, for the running backs and the wide receivers, they, they talk about knockdowns also. And if they get an 80 snaps in the, in the course of a football game, usually there's 100 people that are on the ground collectively by the offensive unit in, when they're on a roll. And today they're on a roll. There have been a lot of Colorado State guys on the ground. They go to the first man through, and he's going to be stacked up. Right at the line of scrimmage is the Colorado State defense, led by Eric Vaughn from that middle linebacker position. Put the hit on Billy Legate. Close the gate on Legate. Big time. Now, this Colorado State team has been known for defense. They led the whack in defense two of the last three years, but they had to replace a couple of great ones, defensive end Brady Smith and Sean Moran. Well, as well as in the secondary, Greg Myers, a fifth-round pick by the Bengals, and, and uh, the Buffalo Bills took Ray Jackson at corner. They've got four guys that were drafted from the third to fifth round, all made their respective teams in the NFL. Four players off that defense. Well, they were counting on a pride factor today defensively, but that sometimes doesn't get it when you're playing such great athletes like Nebraska. Herman rolls out, has a man, and it's incomplete. Right into the hands of Kenny Cheatham. Well, Cheatham was deciding if he was going to spin or turn it to the inside before he caught the football. He was making his first move. Do I pivot inside or outside? And he lost concentration on the most important thing, the point of the football. You got to look it in. And you couldn't throw the football any better than it was thrown right here. He put it right on his number. But watch what Cheatham does. He takes his eyes off. Oh, I'm thinking about turning to the outside. Right. He lost track of the football. You got to catch it first. Cheatham with only one reception so far this year. A young man that's had track and basketball scholarship offers. He's a 6'4", 210 pounder. Ten men on the line again. And on fourth down, Cush's punt is going to be a little shorter than the last one. Antoine at the 20. He is going to be stacked up at the 21. Well, Jesse Cush has had a pretty good day today. He's had an active day. Brian, what do you have on him? He is known as the weatherman uh, among the Nebraska teammates because he's studying to be a meteorologist. And Tom Osborne asked him each week of practice, what are the weather conditions going to be on Saturday, game day? He's been pretty accurate, but he says, you know, that's kind of boring just giving the conditions. So he and Chris Brown load up in a car at times, and they chase thunderstorms, kind of trying to find some tornadoes. I asked Brown, have you found any yet? And he said, no, not in Nebraska, but we're thinking about heading over to Kansas. Now, Dave, they say they have plenty of room in the car if you want to go along. Uh, only if Toto and Annie M's over there, there in Kansas. Go. Then I'll go along. Kickers have entirely too much time on their hands. <laughs> <laughs> These guys got to do something else. Chris Brown was, was quite a character, yeah, so we got a real kick out of talking to him. Yeah, he doesn't have the normal kicker mentality. No, he doesn't, does he? He's more like a, 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 a mad dog defensive position player. <laughs> <laughs> I hope his parents don't have a satellite dish down in Texas. <laughs> Especially since I'm moving there. 44 seconds left to play in the third quarter. 44 to 6. Nebraska's really opened it up here just using their size and their depth. Now Moreno telling Turner to back off the line of scrimmage, and he does. Five step drop, Turner in the flat, complete. And he's hit hard, but not before he gets the first down. Well, that slant pattern has been very, very good to Colorado State, and the corners are giving up the inside. They're playing outside technique, but the linebackers and safety just aren't running out to give that inside support soon enough. So they're finding a little seam in that zone, and Turner and Moreno are taking advantage of it. 
You know, I'll tell you, Ron, I thought that Colorado State had a great game plan both offensively and defensively against Nebraska, but sometimes the other team's X's are bigger than your O's. They're bigger, they're faster, they're stronger, and no matter how you game plan, if you have physical mismatches in X's and O's, it's a tough thing to, to, exactly. to fulfill. Well, better than 75,000. Most of them dressed in red and white have enjoyed the first 45 minutes of play. We have 15 left at a sold-out Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, and the Huskers lead it handily. When there's a football game in Lincoln, Nebraska, 5% of the population of the state are in Memorial Stadium. They lead at 44-6, 15 minutes left, along with Brian Nooner and Dave Lapham. I'm Ron Poole. Our final time with Mr. Lapham this year. Eric Dickerson returns to our crew next week. Hey, it was fun, Ron. Always is. I'll tell you what, we eat a lot more with you. That's for darn sure. Uh, it was a great place last night, man. There was some serious protein overdose going on. Moreno, straight drop back, looks over the middle, pass is complete. Ronald Antoine with the crossing route in traffic, but Moreno once again showing that arm strength. Hey, he definitely has zip on the football. There's a, it's, it's tight revolutions of that spiral. And I tell you what, it gets there in a heartbeat. You can hang your clothes on this frozen rope that Moreno's going to curl right here. Steps up in the pocket. Great release, quick release. And I tell you, that's working against uh, the best cover guy that Nebraska has to offer. the 34-yard line of Nebraska. Colorado State now trying to get something to go for the pride factor. Their running game just hasn't been what they had hoped to. A couple of flags thrown in the defensive backfield. Well, you got to think both of them might, may have seen a holding call occur there or something. They all were thrown at the same time. Looks like maybe holding out on the perimeter must have been very visible because there were hankies everywhere. Oh, a legal block. It was a legal crackback block. It must have happened. You can't, when you crack back, you can't hit below the knees. That looked like Joey Porter kind of turned his head when the officials made the motion, the H-back for Colorado State. Now, when you when you come in outside in, motion from the outside in, and you crack back on a linebacker, you got to hit him above the waist. Illegal block by the offense. 15-yard penalty. Repeat first down. So Colorado State looks like they're trying to make some headway offensively, and then they're pushed back by a penalty. Yeah, one step forward, two steps back. And, and we mentioned one of the big musts for Colorado was no margin for error. Well, they've had way too much error in this football game, Ron, to stay competitive with the team, the quality of Nebraska in their stadium. First and 22, ball pushed back to the 46-yard line. Still in Nebraska territory. Moreno gets rid of it quickly. It is complete. Oh. Jeff Turner gets by the defender down to the 15-yard line and knocked out of bounds at the 13. He ran away from Brown. Turner just pivoted away, pivoted away from Brown, and he picked up quite a few more yards. Picked up 33 on the play. Moreno, I'll tell you, he doesn't get discouraged. He fires and falls back. Look at Brown with the inside technique, giving plenty of cushion off the line of scrimmage. Turner drives him off the line, and Brown loses his footing and then misses the tackle. And Turner just picks up an extra 20 yards as a result of that. Nice route, good effort. That makes four consecutive games. He has gone over 100 yards in receiving. Ball's on the 12, first and 10. They're going to keep it on the ground. Up to the 10-yard line in the line of scrimmage. Somebody ran out of their shoe. There's a shoe sitting at the 22-yard line. Somebody just came right out of their footwear. <laughs> Calvin Branch. <laughs> no, he's got, he, he doesn't have it on. No, he blew a tire. Yeah, he did. I tell you, the, the wheel's there, but the tread's gone. <laughs> There's no rubber on that tire, on that wheel. <laughs> a little tough to run. Man, Calvin Branch. Second down and eight. Boy, Colorado State certainly has had an ambitious schedule, uh, non-conference schedule this year, though, Ron. We'll talk about that a little bit more. But Moreno creeping up on 250 yards passing again. This young man's got a very bright future. Rolls out oh. left, has the time, has a man. It was completely Ooh. dropped. Justin Schull had it in his hands. And then Farley kissed him. I mean, gave him a shot to the chops. Once it, he didn't control the ball. And Schull is no small guy at 6'3", 245. Right. Farley, he has he has some dynamite under those shoulder pads, and he runs around the football field carrying those pads big time and detonates. 
and watch Farley here as the big tight end can't control it. Farley says, I'll punish you then. Ba-boom. That is a shot. And he does. Whew. If you were Nebraska coaches, Dave, yes, you're winning big, 44-6. to six, But Colorado State's averaging almost six yards a play. That is not very good. And they're one for eight on third down. And this is third and long. That's very bad. Right on the long snap. They keep it on the ground, and there's not much there. Make it one for nine. That's, that's a big factor in this football game. One for nine on third down. They've done a lot of their damage on early downs, obviously. Branch didn't have very much running room. And Colorado State's going to come in and attempt the field goal. Matt McDougal had one blocked in the first quarter, which stalled their opening drive. You know, Ron, when you're Colorado State, though, and you play Colorado, Oregon, and Nebraska, that's that's a heavy-duty challenge. And if you get beaten up physically, then you have to go into the whack and play your conference. Sometimes you wonder if it's the smartest thing to do to play all those good programs non-conference. Esslinger to hold, the kick, up and away. They hook it through, and it is good. So Matt McDougal is now four of six, or four of seven on the year. He cuts the Nebraska lead to 44-9, 12-38, left in the ballgame. Twelve thirty-eight left to play in the ball game. Nebraska leads it 44-9. And it has been all Nebraska's offense. They have put together 464 yards total offense to 267 for Colorado State. McDougal set to kick it away. It'll be fielded on the five by Evans. Up to the 30, breaks a tackle nearing the 40-yard line. D'Angelo Evans brought down by Willie Taylor. Let's take a look at our Southwest Airlines storyline. Southwest Airlines, low fares, every flight, every seat, every day. Good day for Frost. Very good day. Very efficient day. He showed an ability to rebound from a from a tough performance, showed resiliency, and Nebraska certainly did their damage in the third quarter. Moreno hung tough, though. He's still hanging tough. He is. But that third quarter, scoring drives a minute 17 less. But there was not much frost on the ground today. Has there been, Dave? No, absolutely. <laughs> no frost. No frost early in this year today, anyway. German in a quarterback. Jay Sims is the new halfback. And he has the football. And he crosses the 40 up to the 41-yard line. Eric Vaughn, the middle linebacker from Colorado Springs, makes the stop. I'll tell you, Whiting at the wingback position had an excellent crack block. I mean, he came, he motioned inside, hit his man above the line of scrimmage, and then worked his way down his body and cut him at the end of the play. Everybody's getting a chance to participate this afternoon. That's what Coach Tom Osborne likes because, hey, you practice all week, you get a payday, you get a little reward on Saturday. Keep it on the ground of Sims again, and he crosses the 45 up to about the 47-yard line. And that's something that they do in the spring practice and also in the fall. As far as their offensive line, they run four or five units on the offensive line. Everybody gets the reps. They're ready to start when they're junior and seniors, but they also get some type of experience then. Ron, you're you're absolutely right. And, and they do scrimmage a little bit, ones against ones, twos against twos. And, and uh, you're right. They have so many repetitions. By the time they're redshirt seniors, they are so efficient and productive at the, up front of the offensive line they just replace all american with another candidate two tight ends for nebraska one lone setback on third and two herman's going to keep it tries to turn the corner does and he gets the first down as he goes inside at colorado state territory Herman at only 5'11, 185 pounds, used every bit of that to get the first. Yeah, sometimes it's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. And Terman was fighting for that first down. I remember a couple of years ago against the Oklahoma State uh, Cowboys, he came in back in 94 and led the Huskers to victory, so he is not new to competition. Understands the offense, he could probably install it as well as the offensive coaching staff. And he has been a very patient, good soldier the last couple of years was the third team quarterback last year. Nice ball thing. Herman on a run for his life. Gets a block, crosses the 45, runs out of bounds. That was a great play by his by his intended receiver, the tight end Aaron Wills. Terman had a run pass option. Wills was his, his tight end on the naked bootleg that was his target. 
and he decided, look, I'm not going to throw it to you, but I'll direct you traffic-wise. Come back and get a little peel-back block. Watch 81 on the red jersey. There he is in front, presents himself to the receiver. Terman says, knock him back. Boom. Gets the block. Nice effort by the tight end. Will's getting some playing time and taking advantage of it. Second and six. Sims spins his way inside the 45 down to the 43-yard line. Jay Sims coming into this game had only carried five times for a couple of yards, or two times for five yards. He's already matched that this afternoon. You know, I'm sure that uh, Coach Tom Osborne and his staff is going to be happy with the way that the entire team rebounded. I mean, there's no doubt that that 19 nothing defeat in the hands of Arizona State really let the air out of the balloon. But they practiced hard all week, and they, they wanted to make a restitution for it. They did today. Third down. Herman held the pitch long enough, gives it up at the exact right time. Sims may have Pater, one man to beat. Down to the five-yard line, and he is corralled. Herman showed exceptional patience on that pitch. He waited till one of the defensive players ran by him. Then he dished it off to Sims, who did the rest. Boy, Ron, just as you call it, I mean, a quarterback, really, he takes one for the team here, basically. I mean, he realizes, he turns it up the football field, knows he's going to get hit, holds it to the last minute before he takes the shot. That's just an excellent read by a heady quarterback, and then Sims is the beneficiary. Stop. Over 500 yards of total offense run, 520 yards after. Well, this is the Nebraska everybody thought would be like in 1996. First man through down to the two yard line and is Billy Legate. Oh, Legate looks like one tough cookie, too. He's yeah, 220 he, pounds, but he's got that bull neck and everything. That's right. It looks like he swallowed a bowling ball and then it gets kind of bigger from there. I mean, short, squatty, typical uh, fire hydrant type fullback. He's basically a pectoral and quadricep muscle out there. You know, I mean, it's, it's, all, it's all you got. Not a, whole, not a whole lot of long body out there. I got to write that bad boy down. Nearing nine minutes, 44 to nine is our score. Herman pitches it back to Sims. He's got most of the yardage on this drive, and he gets the final few. Sims with his first touchdown of 1996. People say uh, Nebraska runs the score up. Hey, Coach Osborne has his substitutes in there, but this is good football players. I mean, they want, they're playing, for, they're trying to get more playing time. So basically, they're out there, they're not going to give it up. They're out there working hard, and Colorado State a little bit tired. They pump it in the end zone once again. Even a backup kicker, Ted Retzliff, the backup field goal kicker, in for the extra point. We have a penalty flag thrown. He puts it through the uprights. But we'll have to see. So Coach Osborne getting everybody in. And you got to like that. I mean, you know, like I said before, you work hard all week at practice. It's great to get an opportunity to participate in the game. You know, you usually do on special teams, but now they're getting some snaps from scrimmage, which is great. Well, the extra point is good. The penalty was against Colorado State. Outside. On the day pass. The point's good. We'll penalize five yards on the kickoff. And we have timeout. 9.07 left to play in the ball game. We'll be back right after this word from Sonic Drive-In, where we invite you to drive in for a change. Nebraska on their way to the school's 700th victory. They lead it 51 to 9. We have still over nine minutes left to play in this ball game. Damon Washington takes it inside the five, has some running room, crosses the 20 up to the 24-yard line. Now, earlier this week, comments were made and released by a judge in Kansas City who was hearing the Lawrence Phillips situation. And the judge said that he wanted to see what was going on in Nebraska and thought there should be a full-blown investigation. Tom Osborne didn't agree. Well, the, uh, the concern I had was that uh, people at Nebraska did look very hard at every aspect of uh, Lawrence Phillips' case and every other situation that we had. And we made the very best decision that we could on the facts and the information that we had. And we certainly didn't hide anything. We did not try to ignore anything. And uh, we just had to go on what everybody told us, the police reports, everybody involved. And uh, that's what we did. And so 
if uh, someone has other information now, all of a sudden it's kind of like uh, Monday morning quarterbacking where somebody has a different viewpoint and uh, it's very easy after the fact to say, well, what you should have done. But obviously um, uh, we, uh, you know, we're labeled, I guess, or I've been labeled as a win at all cost coach. And uh, I, uh, maybe I am, but I certainly would not have uh, played a young man if I felt he was guilty of uh, some of the things that uh, he's been alleged to have done. So anyway, we, we felt bad about that, but we did uh, just make the comment that uh, we, we had to go on what everyone told us were the facts, and, uh, and uh, we think that we acted responsibly uh, on that information. Well, the judge that was seeing that case, his uh, comments were came out. The press got the comments, the transcripts that were made a few weeks ago, and he wasn't sure about what was going on up here. Well, Judge, here's what's going on up here. How about 49 academic All-Americans, the most in football since 1952? Tom Osborne has a graduation rate of his players of better than 75% as Moreno goes up top, and the pass is incomplete. His graduation rate is the best in the Big 12. He has numerous academic All-Americans, so I think before the judge starts making comments about what's going on up here, I think he should maybe take off his robe and come on up here and listen to the task force. Ooh. I thought that was an irresponsible comment by that judge. I thought it was, too, particularly since it was decided out of court, settled out of court. Uh, I don't know, it makes you wonder if the judge is just looking for a little national publicity. But uh, Well, this man is above reproach. This guy, uh, he's, he's a quality individual. There's no doubt about it. Tom Osborne is, uh, is about as, as decent a, a man as you're going to meet. There is no doubt. And whatever you read, folks, Tom Osborne is a wonderful man. Meanwhile, back to football. Moreno completes it to Antoine. It takes quite a shot up to the head. He makes his way up to the 41-yard line. Well, Moreno is not going to give up on this football game. He's going to fire and fall back and do it again and again and again. I mean, he wants to bring some numbers up. He's 13 to 25 now on the afternoon, completing over 50%. He's 255 yards, so every game he's thrown for at least 250 yards, and he's thrown a touchdown pass in every game. So he's got, uh, you know, double-digit touchdown passes on the year. He, he's getting it done. Ball's out of 41, first and 10. Moreno's being a rush. Scrambles out of the pocket, still on his feet. Throws up the prayer, and it's not answered. Intended for Eli Workman, the tight end. What an effort, though. <laughs> well, what time he mean, was scrambling for his life. Yeah, he was Ben Gazzara. He was running for his life full speed, and uh, he really he eluded some big people. You know, a big defensive lineman gets the grip on him, but he can't hold on to Moreno. Sometimes you move and run faster than you can. And the big defensive lineman trying to swing him down, offensive lineman peels him off. Moreno just backpedaling now and throwing off that back foot. Incompletion, though. He avoided giving up the lost yardage. This Colorado State offense has 29 less plays than the Nebraska offense. Moreno on the ground to Washington. Ball is loose. Everybody's diving for it. I think Colorado State may have got it back. A little tug of war happening right now. Let's see. The ball might have exchanged possession. Nebraska's already out with it. They came walking out with the football. Holding it aloft is Steve Warren. Well, Nebraska did get it. Steve Warren saying, here it is. Take it. <laughs> well, despite the fact that Colorado State averaging just a shade under six yards every time they touch the ball, they well, come up with a mistake. Washington not in agreement with the call. If you can read lips, you can definitely see that he wasn't in agreement. <laughs> Little counter tray action. And the ball has definitely popped out of there. I don't know what he's complaining about. That was The ball was out long before he hit the turf. And uh, the big fella. Falls on top of it immediately is Steve Warren. Well, Damon has to take a seat. Nebraska takes over seven and a half left to play in the ball game. D'Angelo Evans, who said there he's going to be a great one, and that shows some signs of just that. Uh, this guy is exciting. In high school, he was like fourth all time in, in yards and fifth all time in touchdown scored, and he missed a bunch of games his senior year. He is a water bug. He's exciting as it gets. Take a look at him here. Pretty good blocking up front. And he bounces it to the outside board as he moves laterally in a heartbeat. Runs through a tackle. He shows speed, agility, and power in one run. About a 19-yard pickup on that play, and he gets a little bit more on that one. 
The true freshman from Wichita, Kansas, 5'9", 210 pounds, and we've seen the Barry Sanders type running back. A lot of 5'9", 5 tenors now. Yeah, and uh, 210 pounds. I mean, that's uh, that's put together. The limit. That's put together. He's uh, look at how thick those thighs are. He's got a hind quarter on him that won't quit. You can't wrap him up that easily. He doesn't give you much of a target to hit either. You know, he has a little forward lean, and once again, he's like tackling a pectoral and a quadricep. We have another new quarterback in, Jeff Perino, the 6'2 redshirt freshman from Durango. He hands it off to Evans again. Well, we talked about the high potent Colorado State offense, what they've done during the year. Let's see what they've done this afternoon. Well, rushing is where it's dramatically down. And, you know, they're, they're totally yards are down, but passing the football, they're close. But they're close to 200 yards away from their season, season average. We said at the beginning of the game that they had to rush for 100 yards or more to stay competitive, and they're only they're not even halfway there yet, and that's been the problem. Evans again. Already 30 yards on three rushes, and See he's going to get his first touchdown of his collegiate career. Four carries for 60 yards in that drive. That was Evans's touchdown drive right there. Boy, is he excited. There's a look at the future right there. He's the fifth Nebraska running back today to have over 50 yards rushing. The fifth one. Man, oh man, they're getting everybody involved in the action here today. And Washington coughing up the footballs, the one that set it up. Restless extra point through the uprights. D'Angelo Evans, his first collegiate touchdown. 6 9 left to play in the ball game. And a big front line blowing him out again. Boy, and they're blocking down the football field, and that's what you have to do when you have a back like this. Somebody has to get a downfield block, because once he breaks the front seven, he can go the distance, just like he does here. Big 12 football will continue after these local messages. set to kick off for Nebraska. They lead it 58 to 9. A little confusion on who's going to return it. Branch still on his feet, getting hit around. Now let's take a look at our Sonic play of the game. Sonic, where we invite you to drive in for a change. And boy, Angelo Evans showing some sonic speed right here. A little counter step, takes the handoff. Watch him turn his shoulders up the field. Boom, gets those shoulder pads square. The most highly recruited running back out of high school last year, and you can see why. He's short, compact, explosive. He's the real deal. Nice run by Angelo Evans for his first collegiate touchdown. Well, we have a new quarterback for Colorado State. Dave Moses Moreno is going to take a seat. Number 12, Ryan Esslinger has checked into the lineup. This is Damon Washington trying to turn the corner, not able to do it. Esslinger, a 6'2 sophomore out of Pueblo, Colorado. Has completed one of four passes for six yards this year. No touchdowns. But he is behind a good one. Yeah, Moreno upheld his end of the bargain. He got a Nebraska play. He made the play. Frank, uh, who? That's uh, Eric Johnson, I believe. Made the play on that, and, and he made the tackle, and he's kind of... Definite hitch in his get along as he makes his way to the sideline under his own power, though. That's amazing. I've been to a lot of football games, Dave, but with five and a half minutes left to play, your team is up by 49. There's still 75,000 red shirts here. Oh, this is diehard. It's no going to make it tough for our producer to get to the airport, gets that flight. That's too bad. <laughs> Messlinger's first oh. pass is caught and then dropped. Right into the hands of Derek Yule, the tight end, number 86. That has happened a couple of times to Colorado State QBs this afternoon. And this one, I didn't really notice him taking his eyes off the football. I think he just uh, basically had an allergic reaction to the pigskin. Just clank. Long time. About 34 years since this stadium was not sold out. 210 consecutive. See the press box on the left? That's probably going to be renovated the next couple of years here in Lincoln. Yeah. They're talking about putting suites in. Esslinger's pass is knocked down, almost intercepted. Boy, when you when you just smell that blood, 
Everybody gets into it. Steve Warren, a defensive tackle, number 85, is the one who came up with the tip. And this Moreno's had a couple of interceptions off of deflected balls and pass rush lanes just kind of occupied by the, the Cornhuskers. Can't find a lane to throw it through, and it's knocked to the ground. McDougal set the kick. Snap is good, very little rush, end over end. Fielded at the 45 by J.R. Edwards. And he is going to be stacked up just after about a two yard game. 536 left to play in this ball game, and the Huskers are back on the winning track. They lead it in a big way. Back right after this word from Dr. Pepper, and it's 85 Dr. Pepper bottlers. Happy to bring you this inaugural season of Big 12 football. You're the one I can count on. Togetherness. Cool, huh? 58 to 9 is our score. We're in the fourth quarter. For those of you who have thrown a little dirt on the body here in Nebraska after last week's loss to Arizona State, you're a little premature on that. The road to a national title is going to be difficult, but it's not impossible. D'Angelo Evans on the carry. Well, one of the important aspects of this football program in Nebraska is their walk-on program. A lot of the starters have also walked on, and here are the names. Well, you take a look at some good football players right there. I mean, a lot of schools would love to have players of this caliber in their, in their program. Nebraska is the only school in the state. Colorado State, Colorado fight for it. Kansas, Kansas State fight for it. This is the only one in the state of Nebraska. Evans again dancing his way close to the 40-yard line. So you get a lot of quality high school players in the state of Nebraska that want to come to school at the state university and right. participate in football. And they've had a lot of great players develop through that walk-on program. And, and then, of course, you start to gain some momentum with the, with the success that they've had. They get players from all over the country to go along with it. First and 10, ball on the 41. Evans is going to take a breather. Jeff Perino is the quarterback. Hands it off, first man through, up to the 32-yard line. Josh Cobb, a fullback in a reserve role. And that's the uh, part of the option that, that hurts the defense the most is when you can hammer the fullback right in the belly of the defense and be successful doing it. Straight line, the shortest distance between the goal posts is right up the football field north and south. That's the course that Nebraska took that time. And Kingston checks in at the fullback spot, number 22. Tom Osborne letting everybody play today. Jay Sims around the left side, crosses the 20 down to the 18-yard line. Pickup of 14 on the play for Sims. Willie Taylor has to come up and make the stop. Once again, I think it might have been Olsen that missed the tackle in the safety spot. I thought that was the key to the football game. Uh, Colorado State was going to commit nine people to stopping the run, the strong and free safety. And if Nebraska's running backs were going to be able to break tackles of those safeties, it's going to be a long day for the Rams. And that's exactly what's happened for the most part. Nebraska has broken the tackles of the unblocked safeties. We've got big plays out of it. Well, Sonny Lubick is concerned that his whack season starts, and there's still a lot riding on this season. And he knows it's 
really begins in earnest next week. And the 59-year-old Sonny Lubick, who has a couple of national titles when he was at Miami under Dennis Erickson. Back-to-back -back whack titles here at Colorado State. But as we mentioned earlier, Ron, a lot of his defensive stalwarts graduated to the National Football League. And rebuilding that defense now, young guys getting experience while they're playing. Second down and seven ball sitting on the 15. The red guys are knocking on the door again. Ben Kingston is stopped right at the line. Third down and six. Take a look at our Dr. Pepper roundup. Colorado leading AM and Miami has defeated Pitt. Pitch to shut out. Clemson over Wake Forest by 11. That is the final. Boston College comes back to beat Navy by five. Third down and six. Ball on the 14 yard line. First man through, crossing the 10 down to the eight yard line. Is Josh Cobb, a fullback, number 42. Other scores Purdue doubles up North Carolina State. Northwestern gets by Indiana by 18. Mississippi State leading Brad Scott in South Carolina and Michigan State. Pitching a blank to Eastern Michigan. Missouri over Iowa State by four. BYU on top of the Mustangs at halftime. And Air Force by four over Rice. That is also an intermission. Fourth down and a yard to go. And I don't think they got it. And speaking of fourths, the fourth quarterback from Nebraska is in the game. Monte Cristo, the count. <laughs> You took my line. <laughs> I was really looking forward to that. Well, Monty had one play, but he can say he got on the turf. Now, this is a big game, believe it or not, for John Blake and the Oklahoma Sooners. They're beginning to rattle the chains down in Norman, and they're trailing Tulsa 10-7 still early on. But boy, if John Blake does not put a win on this one, it could be a very, very long season for the Sooners. Boy, it's, ama it's amazing how far that program fell so quickly. And the big battle, Ohio State leading Notre Dame by five in a second. Colorado State takes over. Esslinger going for the home run toss, and it is incomplete. Looking for Jeff Turner streaking down the left sideline. Well, Nebraska's in their conservative uh, defensive configuration. You're going to have safeties 20 yards down the football field playing a deep zone. They're going to break on the football when it's airborne. I mean, they're not going to let people run by them at this point in time in the football game. So Colorado State's going to have to be patient, even though there's little time left in this game, and work the underneath stuff a little bit. Nebraska travels to Manhattan, Kansas next week to take on Kansas State. That is a very good football team. It'll be a good matchup. And they're going to in another hostile environment. Maybe they uh, learned a little bit out there at Arizona State in the learning right. curve. Colorado State keeping it on the ground with Calvin Branch, and he is going to be dropped for a loss of five on the play. You know, that's one thing that Coach Osborne mentioned, uh, Ron, uh, in our discussions with him yesterday. He said he underestimated the level of the crowd noise out there at Arizona State. And, and uh, as you mentioned, this week at practice, they're practicing with extensive crowd noise. I think in anticipation of another situation in Kansas State, that'll be exactly that. The, biggest, the best way to cure that type of crowd environment, though, to make a big play early and they sit on their hands a little bit. And Nebraska didn't take advantage of big play opportunities early in the game, and the mo momentum of the crowd just built and built. And it's like a tidal wave coming right. at them, the volume upon volume, and just turning that decibel level up. And, and then it just started to unfold. Murphy's Law took effect. Well, Nebraska has rushed for 476 yards. They've totaled 628 total offense to Colorado State's 302. They have had their way offensively, and that's why they lead it by such a big margin, 58 to 9. Of course, next week, we will be in Norman, Oklahoma. The Kansas Jayhawks pay a visit to the Oklahoma Sooners and John Blake, who will do a good job down there, but it's going to take some time. Yeah, there's going to be some uh, some patience, and I know in a football-rich tradition like that that I know you're so familiar with, Ron, uh, patience is not maybe necessarily the greatest virtue over there. <laughs> well, you know, the, the two things they did good down there, first of all, hiring John Blake. I've known him since he played at Sand Springs, Oklahoma. He's a good one. But they hired Steve Owens as their athletic director. Mm -hmm. And we talked about the Nebraska pride and their family. They've got all family down there in Norman now, and that's a positive. Can build with that. Third down and 14 for Colorado State. Yes, 
Kessler, straight drop, throws it, almost intercepted. Should have hit the cutoff man. Yes. <laughs> Let's take a look at our Dr. Pepper player of the game. And today's player of the game is Scott Frost. And it's brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Not a bad day for Scott. Yeah, threw for two, ran for one. I think he should maybe, uh, oh, crack five uh, Dr. Peppers for his offensive line, put him in a frosty mug, and there you all go. celebrate a little bit. Former safety from Stanford. Both his parents played here at Nebraska. His father played under Bob Devaney. His, his mom actually was a discus thrower on the track team, made the Olympic team. Yep. As I said before, Scott Frost won the state shot put championship as a senior in high school, and he beat his right tackle, Eric Anderson. We may add to the score here. Wow. Kevin Wiggins takes it down. Touchdown, Nebraska. Well, when you have a bunch of players on your football team that run 10-3 to 10-5 meter hundreds, 100 meters, I should say, that's what happens to you. That speed flows over to special teams in the kicking game. Wiggins can fly. Boy, I tell you, not bad. 5'11", 190 pounds, sophomore from Palmetto, Florida, Manatee High School. Speed kills, and Nebraska has a lot of it. They've got tremendous defensive team speed. Normally, that means tremendous speed in your kicking game. Uh, they always return to home. Yes, they do. Extra point is good. And Nebraska has hung 65 on Colorado State. Look at it again. Look at the wall forming. All the red jerseys to the left of the screen. Wiggins breaks the tackle right there. Once again, sloppy tackling. And he cuts it up inside of the wall and then busts it to the outside and just speed takes over. Outruns everybody. But if a tackle was made by the kill man covering the punt, it would have been a moot point. But that, that was the biggest, another big key for, for Colorado State this afternoon. Defensively in the kicking game was sure tackling, and it hasn't been that way for them most of the day. Now the winning streak here at home will continue. Last loss was to Washington by 15 back in 1991. Now over the last nine years, they'll have a home record of 53 wins and two defeats. That's amazing. That dog will hunt. 182 return yards? Boy, they've got a lot. They get about, what, 600 and whatever yards total offense, don't they? 628 total offense. Yes. We're starting to get up in some serious football fields here. Colorado State's defense has been on the field 42 more plays than a Nebraska defense. That wears you down when you're going against those big hosses. Damon Washington crosses the 25 on the kickoff return. 60 seconds left to be played in this ball game. Sheldon Jackson talking to the fans and coaches. Oh, hello. How y'all doing? Good. We're doing fine yourself. <laughs> you can smile now. Bruce Snyder at uh, Kansas State, they even sometimes shoot the sidelines. They want to make sure their players aren't mugging for the camera. Yeah. Esslinger's handoff to Branch tries to add to the numbers. Well, Almost up to the 40-yard line. Branch had only 24 yards on 11 carries coming into that carry. I tell you, Washington and Branch are quality running backs, though. I mean, uh, they, they didn't rack up the numbers today that they had going into uh, prior to today's game for the season. But you can see that there's definitely talent there, and they, they give a nice little combination. One the slasher and the other one the cutback guy, and they do a nice job. And they're also without Jamie Blake, a sophomore out of San Diego, California, injured a knee. He is out. Right. Well, they're really one running back short. Got him in the neutral zone again. Penalty flags all over the field with 45 seconds left to be played in the ball game. Jumpy, 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 and this time looks like Bryce Miller was the individual that was in the neutral zone. Hell, Eric Stokes, the free safety for Nebraska, said we want to come home and have a party. I think they can start that party part right about now. Well, there's uh, 
very little evidence of an emotional hangover of the 19 nothing shutout last week at the hands of Arizona State. Uh, and during the course of the season, a way to enjoy success. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. Is selective amnesia. Remember the good things exactly. and forget the bad. And uh, but learn by them. You know, as I said before, I, I'm not. I don't think that the Nebraska coaching staff and players were necessarily shocked they lost the game, but how they lost the game. You know, uh, self-destructing and the, the losing the poise a little bit. Mental mistakes. Yeah, they've rectified that. It looks like. 35 seconds, clock is running. Esslinger's pass is going to be complete to Ronald Antoine. 26 seconds left to play. Antoine, a couple of receptions today, over 50 yards. Jeff Turner was the big guy receiving. Six receptions, 125 yards. Some things never change, huh? Nope. But Amon Green was the main man offensively rushing the football for Nebraska. 163 yards on 22 carries, and he crossed the goal line once. Esslinger, just a straight handoff. That might do it. Naaman Washington just loses the feet. Clock with 13 seconds left, and it is running, and Sonny Lubick and staff are not going to stop it. Well, Nebraska goes to 2-1 and one on the year. They have an impressive victory. They did everything they needed to do offensively. They roll up the big numbers. They win it. 65-9 to nine as Tom Osborne leads the Huskers to their 700th win in school history. That's a little piece of history right there. There's only a handful of teams, uh, programs that have done that. Nebraska joins the ranks. 65 to 9 is the final. We'll be back right after this message from Dr. Pepper. Like a chance to kick a field goal for $1 million? See specially marked Dr. Pepper 12 packs for details.